Well, welcome back, Sox fans. We missed you last night. We're here in Seattle for game two of three. Sox dropped a close one last night, trying to even it up. Gavin Sheets went yard. Nice to see home run power for the White Sox. And Andrew Benintendi hit his first home run of the year last night. Sox 11 games under after the loss. Mariners at 500. They got Lucas Giolito looking for a third consecutive solid start. And Logan Gilbert's a good one. Don't let some of the ERA numbers fool you. He's got a good fastball and a great sinker as well. Hi, everybody. Connor McKnight and Gordon Beckham here with you from T-Mobile Park. Gordon, you played here. You know it well. It's a cool place to play, and it's a spot where the White Sox could use a win to get even in this series. Yeah, they could. They've had a couple of good games and then bad games. They kind of have this start-stop going right now. They've got to find a way to get this series and at least get this win today to give them a chance to win tomorrow. A tough one last night. They scored some runs and then gave it right back up. Uh, they'll look to even the series today. A lot of runs for the White Sox have come via the long ball here over the last couple of weeks. We'll talk about the White Sox power surge in just a little bit. Game two of this series with Lucas Giolito and Logan Gilbert, your starters. So, Gordon, the home run ball. How's it work? How's it happen? What do you see the White Sox doing here? Yeah, we talked to Pedro Grifol before the game, and what he's really focusing his guys on is, is getting a little elevation on that ball. Like, this is not easy to do. You still have to get to a good position, but one of the things that they're doing is they're putting up uh, some screens in front of home plate, kind of where the BP pitcher throws the ball, and they're saying, hit it over this. Basically saying, we need you to launch right now. The infielders are all really good and if you hit it on the ground, they're going to catch it. So it's been working so far. They've had six home runs in their last two games. They've been launching the baseball. They're hoping to get a few more today. Coming up, we'll talk about the starting pitchers in this ball game. Lucas Giolito has been so good. He's kept opponents up all night. They'll try and keep the Mariners sleepless in Seattle. Come back for more White Sox baseball on the way on NBC Sports Chicago. Welcome back to Seattle. First pitch coming up in just a little bit. Lucas Giolito gets the ball for the White Sox today. And Gordon, he's probably been the best White Sox starter this season over his last two. He's been exceptional. Yeah, his last two have been unbelievable. He's gone out there and he's really been focusing on throwing that fastball and slider, not necessarily that changeup that you've been always accustomed to seeing. But biggest thing I've seen, the ERA, 0.69 in June with a 0.77 whip. He is going at hitters. As you can see, the 15 strikeouts to four walks, that is the difference. He is going at hitters and attacking the zone, and that aggressiveness has really been working for him. He has been solid all year, but incredible in June so far. Coming up, we've got first pitch, and we'll see if the White Sox sluggers like Jake Berger can keep up the power show here in June. Don't go anywhere. Sox and Mariners in just a bit on NBC Sports Chicago. For a White Sox home run hitters, Eloy Jimenez there at the top. Gavin Sheets down there at plus 550. There's Luis Robert. He's got himself a career high in home runs so far. And Gordon, who could, who could forget? Jake Berger hitting the way he has. Sheets had one last night as well, but... Goodness, this, these boppers for the White Sox up and down the lineup have really been providing the offense for the Sox. Could use a little bit more with guys on base, but the power's there. Yeah, a lot of solo shots so far, but if you get some guys on, it can really change the game in a hurry with a crooked number. So let's see if they can get some uh, bloops and a blast, so to speak. Here's your starting lineups. A change at the top for the White Sox. Andrew Benintendi in the leadoff spot. Tim Anderson batting second for the first time in a long time. We'll talk about that change Pedro Grafal has made. Oh, and also Andrew hit his first home run of the season last night. Nice to get that done. And they'll be facing this guy, Logan Gilbert, on the mound for the Seattle Mariners. Gilbert, his third season in the big leagues. He's been very solid in years past, but this year his ERA with a 4.38, a little bit higher than what he's used to. But the interesting part is a 1.03 whip, which means he's not giving up that many hits, that many walks. That's a very good number. And this is his arsenal. He used that four seamer and slider the majority of the time. He'll, he'll mix in the knuckle curve and splitter as well. But um, don't let that ERA fool you. He is very good, but he does have a tendency to give up the long ball. So he might be playing right into the White Sox today. And let's take 
uh, a look at the defense presented by UI Health for the Mariners. Dylan Moore, Julio Rodriguez, and Jared Kalinick out in right field. You got Suarez, Crawford, Caballero, and France in the infield. Gilbert's on the mound, and Tom Murphy is behind the dish. Check out the home plate umpire. There's Quinn Wolcott. You see the strikes and balls he's going to call tonight. Just kind of where his averages are. Look out for those right-handed hitters, too. That could be a little bit of a change in the socks of a handful of righties. So do the Mariners in the lineup this afternoon. Logan Gilbert, you mentioned, Gordon, has been a real interesting one to watch. You talked about the ERA up there around four. Gilbert's allowed just 78 base runners this year in 13 starts, and that's the fewest in Major League Baseball. So long story short, when they're on, they've tended to score, but he doesn't let a lot on. Yeah, it's interesting. He's got an expected ERA of 3.66, so not a point lower than his 4.38 ERA, but, but close to it. So he's definitely been pitching better than what his numbers show. He'll start out against the lefty, Andrew Benintendi, at the top for the first time this year. Suarez in at third. We are underway. A hard shot skips over the glove of the second baseman, Jose Caballero. So there's a leadoff man on with one pitch for the White Sox, and this is exactly what you hope for with T.A. Batten in the second spot. He can go to the right side and find some space. Absolutely. This ball's hit very hard right at the second baseman, does a terrible job of moving his feet, and because of that, that ball eats him up, and the White Sox have something cooking. That is going to be an error on the Steelheads um, right there. They're not the Mariners today. They're the Steelheads. Love that. It's the throwback. The West Coast Negro League Steelheads. Anderson takes one low and in. Might have been close. Spoke to T.A. today before the game, and he's real interested in finding the other side of the field, middle the other way, and he said his body was just doing something that wasn't allowing him to stay in that direction. Yeah, as you see right there, got a fastball inside, trying to go the other way. One of the things he mentioned to me is that partly because of that knee, but partly because his body was shifting towards the mound, he was getting off of his, uh, off of his backside, and because of that, he's not able to shoot the ball the other way like he knows how to. It's what he was trying to do. He just couldn't pull it off with his body. One and one count for Anderson. Fouled back that one. This first inning of White Sox baseball is brought to you by Toyota. What does it do to a guy's psyche for a guy's psyche with a guy's mindset to get a job change like this from the first to the second spot in the order. I, I like the move I mean because T.A. needs to be uh, moving guys over and pushing the ball to the right side of the field this this move makes him do that. Good take on a curveball outside Gilbert's going to throw a lot of fastballs as you mentioned a good breaking pitch as well Gilbert gets a lot of extension otherwise the fastball is not necessarily remarkable. But he's right up there in terms of guys who rush it to the plate. Just getting started here in Seattle. Leadoff man on with an error by the second baseman, Jose Caballero. Another one tried to shoot for the right side. This is strength for strength, right? This is what T.A. is best at. They got him set up to do it. Yeah, I mean, I think T.A. is probably frustrated he missed those last two pitches. I mean, they're pitches that he needs to hit. But I will say overall, all four of the swings that he's had in this at bat have looked a lot more like him. Let's see what, if he can cash it in. 2-2 two -two coming. There's a ground ball, this time to the left side. J.P. Crawford underhands to Caballero. And it's a 6-4-3 double play. So instead, Gilbert rolls two. Time for today's stats with Lowe's. Here's Luis Robert, and you'll see him right at the top of this particular leaderboard. Once Lowe's build the house down there in the left-hand corner, 929. That's a good slugging percentage regardless of what pitch you're talking about. Good names to be surrounded by there, too. Judge and Arenado. And that's why Robert sees as many sliders as he does because pitchers know if they give him the heat he'll crush. Robert's got the average at 260. Gilbert trying to make it a quick first. No one teases the outside edge that time one and one. Robert last night 0 for 3 three strikeouts. Ground ball up the middle, slowly hit. Another chance at redemption for Caballero. 
and he gets his man. So after the error, a couple of quick ones, Lucas Giolito will pitch when we come back. Ty France is a good one, an all-star last year, and there's Teoscar Hernandez square in the middle. Semi-local guy, Jared Kelnick from Waukesha, Wisconsin. That's close enough to Chicago, right? It counts. That's how Scott Service has lined him up for the M's. Mariners will be facing Giolito, 15th starter of the year, 5 and 4 at the 3.54. He's been really good, and he's been really good in June. A .69 ERA with a .77 whip. 15 Ks to only four walks. So here's the arsenal. We all know it. Four seam fastball slider change is really what he's going to work in. He will mix in that curveball every once in a while, but oh boy. First pitch swinging and belted high and deep to right. Mariners on top. The first pitch to J.P. Crawford. Hammered into the seats for his fourth home run of the season. One nothing Seattle. Oh boy is right. There's the power on display for the Mariners. Ambush tactic. First pitch of the game for the Mariners, and he didn't go down looking. An absolute jack to left field. Four seamer right down the middle. He was looking for it, got it, didn't miss it. One nothing Mariners. Well, you know what they always say solo shots don't usually beat you. That's just a solo shot. He counted up as one and get to work against the rest of this lineup. Here's Julio Rodriguez. A sensational rookie season for Julio Rodriguez last year. Put his name in as one of the best in baseball. A little bit of a sophomore slump here, Gordon, at 240 average and on base percentage just under 300. Popped up high and on the infield. Jake Berger taking a look at this one, and it's in the mitt for one away. Hey, let's check. Let's check out the defense presented by UI Health for the White Sox from left to right in the outfield. Ben and Robert Jr. in sheets in the infield. Berger, Anderson, Andrews, and Vaughn. Gio is on the mound, and Zavala is behind the plate. Ty France, the hitter, an All-Star last season. Mike Trout could not participate in the game, so Ty France got sent to the All-Star game. Swing it to the first and in the center field. Another hit. That's two for Seattle. They already lead on J.P. Crawford's fourth career leadoff home run. Geo goes with another fastball four seamer, kind of top of the zone, middle, and France is looking to hit. Looks like all these Mariners are coming out swinging today. Definitely something for Geo to understand that they are going to ambush and see if he can maybe get them to make some weak contact with that first pitch and not groove them a fastball. These offenses are kind of parallel. They do like to swing. There's a lot of contact, a lot of strikeout possibility for both sides. Teoscar Hernandez takes a strike. He's got 88 punch outs, just to prove the point. 12 home runs on the year. Giolito's off the leg and into center field. France with a turnaround second. That ball just trickles slowly to Robert in center. And all of a sudden they're on the corners for Seattle with one already in. Another ball hit very well off Giolito. It's a slider this time. Unfortunately for Gio, it goes off of his front foot. If it doesn't, it's probably a double play going right back to Andrews. Assuming he doesn't hit the bag at second, it's more than likely going to be a double play and out of the inning. And unfortunately for the White Sox, it hits off Geo's foot and goes into the outfield. And the Mariners have got something cooking again here in the top of the first. This will bring up Jared Kalnick off to a blazing start in the first month of the season. Has cooled off a bit since, but living up to that top prospect hype. First pitch slider. Giolito kind of changing the tactic here after the Mariners have ambushed that fastball. First and third, and now the job is to not let things get out of hand early. Change up misses down. You know, I, in live action, Gordon, I thought that came off of Giolito's front foot, but there is a divot in the front of the pitcher's mound. I think that thing just smoked the front of the mound and got into center field on a weird hop. Well, it definitely, it didn't hit off of his front foot initially. It hit off the mound where you see that little indention and then kicks off his his toe it looked like 
and then just aptly, aptly splits Tim Anderson and Elvis Andrews. Let's take one more look at it. And maybe the inside part of his foot, not sure. But either way, as you can see, Elvis would have been right there for that double play. A little bit of bad luck for the Sox. Sox could use a twin killing here. Giolito gets a strike with a fastball at 92. Kelnick's got 11 home runs. Part of that big trade with the Mets. Robinson Cano and Edwin Diaz heading out to the Mets. Kelnick, the headlining prospect in return here to Seattle. Swing and a miss. He got him with a higher than high fastball. That's a big second out. Statcast is presented by Google Cloud, and here you'll see the strikeouts compiled by Lucas Giolito over his last two starts, 15 of them in total. And the walks have been down quite a bit as well. And what stands out to me is generally his changeup has been known as a strikeout pitch, but what you're seeing there is a four seam slider combination that is the reason that he's striking out guys. A lot of people look for that changeup, and he's gone away from it, and it's been working for him. Ball gets away from Sebi. Down the line comes France, and to second goes Teoscar Hernandez. A wild pitch. It's 2 0 Seattle. Yeah, it'll probably be ruled as a pass ball. Seve's trying to get a strike that's below the zone, and because he's trying to be uh, a little sneaky back there, see what he tried to do. He tried to get it back up in the zone and maybe get a cheap strike. And unfortunately for the White Sox, he misses, and it allows that second run to score. One more in scoring position on the one that got away. It is a pass ball. And there's a first pitch, or rather a first strike on a slider to Eugenio Suarez. And I would say overall, uh, Gio, besides throwing those fastballs in the middle of the plate, he looks pretty sharp. So if he can just get out of this inning with two, two runs, he'll keep his guys in the game. 1-1 one, one missed high. Yeah, and get a chance to regroup, too. Gordon, one of the things that he's been able to do a lot too is get strikes with that slider not just swings and misses to end at bats and that changes an approach for hitters. Longer look at a 2 1 to Suarez fouled off. Yeah he's been able to use that slider to his advantage. He's got good feel to throw it down in the way to righties and I think that he's been able to throw it more often and save his change up for maybe an early strike versus a strikeout so he's getting ahead with that change up early and then using the slider fastball combo late. He's down with a breaking pitch there Suarez is kind of that guy in the Mariners lineup he has a ton of power you don't want to put it over the middle here in 3 2 but he is hitting 218 with a 314 on base not the greatest start to his season. See if Lucas can get that third out. Popped up right side. This could do it. Vaughn taking a look, fading toward the track and makes the catch. Two runs, one on a homer by Crawford, one on a pass ball. Sox will come to bat next. Nothing to Seattle. A home run by J.P. Crawford and then a pass ball scored another. Those on Lucas Giolito's tab. The Sox trying to fill up the card for Logan Gilbert. Got a ground ball double play to work through an error in the first. Eloy Jimenez takes a strike. He's got a five game hit streak. Average up around 260. Seven long ones as well. Shot into the left center gap. High and deep. And gone. Eloy Jimenez lifts number eight into the seats and the Sox have cut this lead in half. It's two to one. Absolutely pounced on it. Seattle fans threw it back onto the field. You could probably use that as a memento maybe. Here's the replay right here. He takes a first pitch fastball because of the inning before, but gets an off speed pitch, I believe, right there, and just absolutely deposits it in the left center gap, which they shortened a few years back. That one's probably gone even at the old park, or at least the old fence. Eloy picking up right where he left off. That one's gone in a lot of parks. Gavin Sheets. 
he'll put the jacket on next. He did last night. Really ripped one down to the right field side. The last game we had in L.A., they couldn't get the the jacket and hat off quick enough to get it to the next guy because there was two back to backs. It was hilarious because everybody was kind of they didn't look very dapper because they couldn't get their arm through arm in and out of the jacket. That's your classic good problem to have, right? That's right. Sorry, boys, we couldn't get the home run jacket to you hitting too many of them. Gavin Gavin hit a two iron out to right center yesterday. A little hard, stinger action. Hard club to hit. Gilbert gets a slider well placed as well. So now two and two. After sheets would be Vaughn. Swing and a miss got him on the split. That's the first strikeout for Gilbert. And this will bring up Vaughn. Throws the splitter probably the best one he's thrown might be the first one he's thrown as well. Strike the ball right over the middle part of the plate. Looks like a strike the whole way. Gavin swings over the top of it. It's one out for the White Sox here in the top of the second. After the home run by Jimenez to start the inning, Vaughn into right center. This has got a little legs, but now cut off by Kelnick. Didn't look too sure of it as he took off for it. But you can see he heard the call. Take a look at some news and notes. The latest breaking around the bigs. Boy, Luis Arias, an 0 for 15 and then 5 for 5. No big deal. 390. Ronald Acuna Jr. from your neck of the woods. The power, the speed, the grace. How about the debut for Emmett Sheehan last night in the Dodgers? They need that. Oof. They've been so banged up with the pitching. Made his debut, six no hit innings. Here's Jake Berger with two away. The 0 1, a slow one. Gilbert could not get the curve to tap the top of the strike zone. Set up outside. Berger swings at a slider, breaking toward the edge. That's a strike anyway, though, tough pitch. Yeah, other than the ball that Aloy hit out to left center, Gilbert has looked really sharp. I mean, most of the pitches he's. He's been throwing her on the edge of the plate down strike the ball. He's he, he looks very good. White Sox are going to have to grind to climb back in this one. He's got the high leg kick and a one two blocked by the catcher Tom Murphy. He's the backup for Cal Raleigh who played last night. Gilbert's an interesting one. He kind of added that splitter over the last year or so. And it's a pitch designed to keep guys in the ballpark. And had been the knock on him last year. Two to one your score with Eloy Jimenez riding one out to left center field. Berger in a three two here's the pitch. Just tap foul it's got to be tough to face a guy that's got a good slider and good sinker we see so many combos like that throughout the bigs but it's hard from it's hard to tell the difference between either one. Another 3 2. And Berger's down to first with a walk. Nice AB by Berger. Worked a very good walk presented by Felco. I'll just do uh, the, pro <laughs> the promo for, for you, Connor, because um, I just decided to step in. But I appreciate you. A very uh, good at bat by Berger. Worked that count, fouled off some tough pitches, finds a way to get on with two outs. Maybe they can make something happen here with two outs and Andrew Sub. Gilbert have to change it up out of the stretch for the second time. Ben Attendi reached with an error, and that was the first. Elvis Andrews shot into center, but Julio Rodriguez is there and will make the catch. So a home run by Jimenez. And he wear the jacket. JP Crawford had the trident. More home runs on the way, maybe, from Seattle. With guaranteed rates, same day mortgage, you'll be ready to move into your dream home in as little as one business day. Ready to make your move? Visit rate.com to get started today. Lucas Gilito kicks and fires. Tom Murphy, Dylan Moore, Jose Caballero, 7, 8, and 9.
do up for Seattle. I love the fact that the White Sox got right back on the board. You get two runs in the body. You let up two runs. You you answer in the top of the second. Really good job by the White Sox. That kind of puts uh, the game back at even in a little bit. Obviously they're still down but it's a good answer to that two run bottom of the first. And you mentioned in that first inning the stuff from Lucas still good location just a bit off with the fastball and that's how he got burnt. A 1 1 on the way. There's a slider right on the edge. It's been that pitch for Lucas. Murphy hitting 233. Came up in 2015. He's been around a while. Good quality backup catcher. Can't understate the importance of a secondary backstop in this game now with 26 man rosters. Gotta have somebody you can depend on. Giolito to Sebi Zavala. Swing and a miss. A good change gets him. Let's take a look at the AL Central. Some action underway. Focus in on the Central with our Central Focus. Angels got the Royals last night. Diamondbacks beat the Guardians. It was a good night, if there is one, to lose a tight ball game for the White Sox. They keep five and a half back in the division. Heading into today's game. Giolito's first on a slider. Ooh, gets the bottom of the strike zone. Nice to have that extra real estate. Dylan Moore's not seen a lot of action for Seattle. Had an oblique injury through spring training that's kept him out of most. This is just his fourth game. He's 0 for 9. They like him everywhere on the diamond, kind of their do everything type dude. Dave Lucas can send him back on the 0 2. High and wide with a fastball. Moore signed a three year contract extension. Core surgery last year led to the oblique. One two bounce that time it changed so from 0 2 to 2 2 you don't hear a lot of core surgeries. That's a interesting a core muscle surgery. Yeah. yeah you don't hear that a lot you hear a lot about obliques but generally they heal themselves. Some sort of abdomen injury he had to have surgery on. Inside three and two. I guess his broadcasters. I hear more about core surgeries if, if we had abs in the first place. Not a lot of play by play guys have them. I'm unfamiliar with the procedure. I'm right there with you. <laughs> Pitch clock down to zero, and this 3 2 is just outside. So more works to walk. It's a one out base run. Connor, I hope you warmed up your voice. Follow our Sox insiders mm -hmm. at NBCSportsChicago.com, presented by Nationwide agent Jeff Vukovic. Get to enjoy knowing the Vuk as much as you do the jingle at JeffVuk.com because Nationwide is on your side. side. We got to work on it. We got to work on it. I'm not. I'm not unhappy with the performance. Well, if you had, if you had seen some of. <laughs> if, if you had seen some of me and Benetti's performances lately, you would be like, wow, we've got some work to do, but we do have time. All right. Yeah. Um, Benetti's got a voice of an angel, though. It's 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 hard to. Said nobody. Jose Caballero, the nine hitter. It's made an impact for these Mariners swing and a miss on a slider that time. Committed the error though in the first. That was Andrew Benintendi leading off the game. You think Jason will send notes on the singing performance if we asked? Shoot him a text. I think we're gonna we're gonna push that one under the rug. I think that uh, Nationwide wants their money back. Well, that's gonna come from you, my friend. <laughs> Throw over by Lucas. There was not a lot of jingle in that. We need more jingle. We need more jingle next time. In the time. jangle. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense to me. Two to one. Steelheads on top. It's actually pretty cool on the center field scoreboard. We've got the Mariners listed as the Steelheads today. Pitch by Lucas. At the time of fastball down. That's about where he's been, 92, 93. 
funny though, even though the stretch for Lucas, these last two starts have been as good as you've seen, he's been able to kind of mix and match that velocity with the fastball and been effective doing it. A 1 1 outside, good block by Sebi. It's a good stop to keep the runner at first. Held on to his change up a little too long. He's losing a little bit of that release point in this bottom of the second so far. All it takes generally is one pitch to find it again and hopefully he'll find it quick quick and get a possible roll over to the left side. Two one on the way runner stays put snap throw down to first and a backhand attempt by Vaughn not in time. Sebi's pretty willing to throw down to the bases. He'll fake a toss down there every now and again as well. He's got a good arm and showed it off here. Three one the count to the nine hitter Caballero. Everybody back on the White Sox infield. Runner goes. The throw down to second is in time. He got him. Elvis Andrews there to slap the tag on him. Two away. Great transition right here by Seve. I mean, like, absolutely fantastic pop time. And right on the money. Good tag by Andrews. Looks like it's going to be upheld. Look at that. Quick transition. Good, good pitch to throw on for him. Fastball that just kind of leads him into his, his throwing hand. Fantastic job to kind of stop this and hopefully Lucas can take advantage now two away a three two check swing foul off the railing in front of the Mariners dugout this is the type of a bat you just don't want to see Lucas lose him after he throws that guy out said he throws that guy out definitely want to see him take advantage right here and in this inning right now this is where you challenge on something toward the edge that's where Sebi set up shot in the left though this is going to be down for a hit Cutting it off in the corner is Benintendi around first and two second with a slide is Caballero. Just a good piece of hitting. Yeah, he just unfortunately for Gio, he just has a little, he's not finding that release point on some of his off speed right now. A hanging slider. Caballero doesn't miss it. Benintendi did a very good job right here to get to this ball. Actually had a chance at him at second if he's able to make an accurate throw, but just a little bit off. Probably doesn't have him either way. Thought it was good for him to get there and even make it a play at second, though. J.P. Crawford hit the first pitch he saw out of the ballpark for a homer. This one a slider down. That pitch he rode out was a fastball, so he gets the breaking pitch here. See the numbers for Crawford at the top of this Mariners lineup. Two to one early. Gilito has been into and out of some trouble already. Pitch catches the edge. It's a trademark Giolito change. The thing to watch right now is the pitch count though. He's at 37. He's not through two yet. The White Sox would love to see some length. After yesterday they had to use the bullpen pretty exclusively from the fifth on. 1 1 taken down. Yeah, a lot of pitchers used in that series against the Dodgers. Of course, you're going to have that when you go into extras, at least most nights. The Sox put Mike Clevenger on the injured list after the biceps issue that he had. Tanner Banks came up. Jesse Schulten's up as well. Spin move down to second. Anderson was on the way, but. It's just the first disengagement for Lucas. Caballero's got 10 steals. I'm not saying he's necessarily running here with two out. Good wheels. Two one down low. You'll see guys kind of mix the uh, timing to the plate as well in situations like this. And pitch clock has changed the strategy on that a little bit, but still a weapon for pitchers. Three one, don't want to lose them. Called strike at the top of the zone. Crawford didn't like it. Lucas loved it. Back to full. 
Fastball, top of the zone, catches an edge. Good job by Lucas. You know Crawford's probably frustrated because he's, you know, he's looking fastball, and for him not to pull the trigger, he thought it was a ball, but as we can see, probably caught a little piece of the zone. Big 3-2 coming up here in the second. On the way. Another one shot down the right field line, but this will just go foul. Whew. It's fair for a long way. It looked like Lucas threw what I believe is a changeup, just middle middle. I was watching live. Let's see the replay. We're gonna see it. Fair for a long time, but as everybody on that White Sox dugout could see, it was gonna hook foul. Everybody's breath held for just a moment. 3-2 coming. Rolled over first base and foul. And so we've seen the last three a high fastball taken for a strike out in front of a change and then another heater. I haven't seen the slider from Lucas in a couple of pitches. As much as I hate to say it you kind of need to be careful with Crawford right now he's looked really good at the plate. Inside he walked him. And I, the reason I say you hate this, I hate to say it, is the fact that now I think he's got 44 pitches, right. and you don't want to see a walk. But this guy's looked dangerous. He's already hit one out of the ballpark. He just hit another one foul. You don't want to groove him anything. Take your chances with the, the rookie sensation from last year, who's having a down sophomore year. Julio Rodriguez did have two hits last night, a single and a double. He was two for five. All star signed to a 10 year deal worth nearly 400 million in August of last season. That's good work if you can get it. First and second with two away. The pitch by Lucas popped up foul behind home plate. Time for today's Mr. Clean Magic stats, and they pertain to Julio Rodriguez. Started a little cold, has been better of late. Kind of interesting the home runs are split six and six in each of the two splits we're looking at here. Strikeouts have come down. Still not off to the unbelievable pace he was on last year. 0 1 ripped foul. But now he's got an 0 2 and a chance to pitch his kind of ball game here. Hopefully so. These Mariner hitters are teeing off right now on Lucas. I mean everything he throws near the plate. They're not missing the barrel. You know that frustrates Lucas too. Throwing pretty much everything he's got up there and they're on everything. Rodriguez is taking his time out. You've seen that almost become boilerplate for hitters. You get behind 0 2 1 2 immediately taking that time out. Gathering things back together. Said it a couple of times already, Gordon. 45 pitches for Lucas. Bottom two. Runners off to huge leads. The pitch. Check swing. Did not go. One and two. Checked it up right here. He probably held up. If I'm the third base coach, Maniac, I'm telling these runners, stay right there. Let him hit. Another one foul. It's hard enough to hit in general, but when you have this guy at second base and the, uh, dancing off and he's halfway to third base and it's 0 2, it's just kind of adding um, adding problems to a hitter's eye. I'm shocked to see them trying to steal with two strikes. Hard enough to hit, don't need a distraction in your view. Runner's not off to that big lead this time. The swing and a ground ball. Handed there by Berger, but he's got nowhere to go with it. Came up looking a less than maybe a little hundred percent. It's a great snag on a big hop. They need a good to go play to a, keep the bases loaded. I feel like they need to go have a conversation right now with Lucas, but a really nice play to save a run down the line by Berger. He's unable to get up quick enough, and he's clearly not going to throw J-Rod out at 
first base. So it's actually a pretty good eat. The only thing I was thinking is if he could get up and go quickly to second base, he might have a chance at Crawford. Um, tough play right there. He's got to be able to transition once that ball hits his mitt. He's got to transition up really quick to get either one of those runners. So they saved a run. Unfortunately, it's another base hit for the Mariners. And as I said, I think that uh, Ethan Katz will try to calm Lucas down and give him a breather right here. He's had a ton of pitches this inning, and his next one will be the 50th pitch, excuse me, 49th pitch of the game. And we're not through two innings yet. See the total balls and strikes there. Five hits for the Mariners. J.P. Crawford led off this game with the first pitch home run. And it's been a battle for Lucas since. Time for today's family insurance home protection. As you see Ty France. With a couple of long ones a good slugging percentage. And a lot of that damage done here at T-Mobile Park. Bases loaded two away. That first pitch is taken high on a fastball. So 1 and 0 oh to the slugger France. He singled in the first, came around to score on a pass ball. Last night, a pitcher's duel, and this one, the Mariners threatening to turn into the other thing. We got it started early, but held back on a slider. So now 2 and 0. Oh. That average with the bases loaded way up there for Seattle. They left a bunch on last night. That's credit to a very good White Sox pitching staff the last month and a half. 2 0 from Lucas. There's a called strike to get back into the fight. Nowhere to put France with two away. Inning started with a strikeout of Tom Murphy. And this one lifted into right. Sheets has a beat on it and will put it away for the third out. Things got dangerous for a while, but Giolito up to the challenge. Sox would come to bat in the third. They trail two to one. Third inning brought to you by Hyundai. 2-1 Mariners Lucas Giolito wriggled off the hook he had the bases loaded but kept Seattle from the plate Logan Gilbert to Sebi Zavala high fastball misses and the numbers for Sebi four home runs and a real good tandem with Lucas here this season as well the 1 0 offers a slider off the plate. I think that's something a lot of catchers who pride themselves on kind of the pitch calling the game management. You know, they feel like they've won a ball game if their pitcher pitches well. That's the contribution. High fly ball way up there. This is a major league pop if I've ever seen one. Crawford at short will make the catch. Time for the blue sky cleanup hitter. Some of the cleaning up the White Sox were able to do last night. Gavin Sheets and Andrew Benintendi. First time this year you've seen lefty pop two times in a ball game for the White Sox, and that is great to see. Hopefully, a lot more to come. And you see that two iron stinger I was talking about off the bat of Gavin. We got the U.S. Open um, on this weekend, and you saw how he backspun that ball to right center. It just kept going. When I saw it live, I didn't think it was going to ride out of here, but it did. Yeah, it reached his apex probably close to the the outfield wall. I mean, it really just rose and rose and rose and then found some seating they put up there in the right center bleachers. Oh, and two on Ben and Tendy. He took a high fastball out last night. That time Gilbert got a strike with a high curve. Oh, Shot yeah. Shot down the third baseline. That's a peach. Ben Intendi trucks around first. He's going to head to second. The throw is cut off. Oh, a head first dive, nearly a scorpion. But he saved it on the way into the bag. Looked less than comfy. Yeah, there's something weird about that because it looked like he was just kind of cruising into second base. And then actually, a really good throw by Moore. If it's not cut off, 
It's 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 a there's a play. I got excited. I thought it might be close. I was excited just about the swing. I mean, look at this. Just taking what what he gives you, he just pokes it right there. Really good job. Just fastball away. I said, okay, I'll just take my double the other way. Love that Very homer nice. last night. You're taking the the open field in the day after 16 doubles now for Ben and and a chance for the White Sox with the runner in scoring position to tie it up. Inside on Tim just got out of the way. Here, let's watch the slide again. Looks like he was kind of grinding to get there. Yeah, he didn't. Something didn't. I don't know. There was just something about that that made me a little concerned. See him flex the right hand a little bit as well. Kicked by Gilbert. And the two O's in there for a strike. And he did get hit on a on the hand recently. I don't know if it was that. Maybe uh, the hand diving into that dirt might have jarred him a little bit. He's tough. And he's hit by a pitch back on the 15th. Another one high and inside on Anderson. Hey, join us next Friday, June 23rd, for NASCAR Night presented by Xfinity. Kick off the first ever NASCAR Chicago Street Race. Receive a limited edition co branded cooler sling when you purchase a specially priced ticket. Be sure to stay after the game for a post game fireworks show. And to purchase your ticket package, visit whitesocks.com slash NASCAR. Throw in the second and Ben Attendee's back. Got a lot of dirt in his pants right yeah. now. That's that's can't be fun. Among other things. So we'll take a look at it again. Ground ball down to third, and it's just foul. Anderson's got to check the bat. It sounded like it might have broke a bit. He seems cool with it. Three-two count. Ben Attendee is still brushing dirt off the uniform. I mean, he's been cleaning the thing for about 10 minutes now. Club, he's going to have some work cut out for him to get all the dirt out of that uniform. That's a sign of a good game, generally. 3 2 for Tim. Tying run at second. Ben Attendee's off for third. The throw's high and no chance. It's a walk anyway. Well, he read that perfectly to Ben Intendi, and that's a great extra 90 feet to take. That's huge right there. Absolutely huge. Great job by Ben Intendi. He's not, he's not satisfied. It is 3-2, but Gilbert just kind of does what he's been doing, which is a look to second and go into the play. Ben Intendi takes the chance. He gets that little hop step, and you're going to see it, and that gets his momentum going. As soon as he gets it, he's gone. Great job by him. Good at bat by Tim. We talked a little bit about Tim trying to get to the other side of the field, which he uh, told me before the game. That's that's his goal, but his body wasn't really allowing him to do it. He feels like he's got a better idea of what he needs to do to start pushing that ball uh, middle and to the right. And we'll see how that progresses over the rest of this uh, this series. But good job by both guys. Robert swings and misses at the first pitch. This is a great chance here for the Sox to get right back into it. Runners on the corners and one away. Roberts 0 for 1 with a ground out. No stranger to extra base hits. His name's up there with a couple of big ones. And the pitch is a check swing, fouled the first base line. Tim had a big lead there, kind of took that extra jump hop like you saw Ben Intendi when he dad headed down a third. It's a base running move that's been popularized a lot. The Yankees have been doing it quite a bit with their new base running instructor, Matt Tallarico. It's gotten a lot of press, but it's been used in this game for about 60 years, just kind of coming back into vogue. Roberts 0 2 instead of throw over to first. Disengagement number one. You can't be afraid to throw over to the bases even though the disengagements are limited. I was talking to Dylan Cease about that a couple weeks ago. He said you have to be willing to throw over. You can't be scared. Tim goes. Robert lifts it high and foul. Brant's off the bag. He'll make the play, and Tim's going to get doubled off. He didn't see it. He took off. So a pop-up double play ends the threat for the White Sox. Mariners will come to bat. They lead 2-1. to one.
Welcome back to Seattle. Sox had a chance in the third. You kind of see Tim Anderson in there doing a little work on the glove, getting all set. He was doubled off of first on a foul pop. Giolito's offer to Teoscar Hernandez. Misses down for ball one. Sox had him on the corners. Robert popped out to end it. So now Lucas Giolito, who had a battle in the second. Long foul strike on Hernandez. Now one and one. Teoscar singled up the middle. That was back in the first. He's one for one. It's a small thing, but Tim, when he stole, he hit second base, and on the way back, he didn't hit second base. So even if he gets back, they still bang him because he didn't hit second base on the way back as well. It's an interesting, just a weird play. As a look at Tim. A little cooler here in Seattle than normal, but you can see Lucas working up a sweat there on the jersey. Pitch fouled off and just under us. Good first step, Gordon. Now here's a look at Tim Anderson on that play in foul territory. He's down the base and now right there had a chance to maybe reach out and stab it on the way back. But yeah, the only thing I'd say is like it, when 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 you hear that crack of the bat and you are running, you do need to look up and try to find the ball because of something that just happened, right? I mean, that's as soon as that ball's hit, it might be a, a steal, but as soon as you hear the crack of the bat, you know that the ball's either in play or a foul ball. So you, you got to try to find find the ball, and because of a situation like that where you might have to get back to the bag. And it was hit so softly, it probably sounded differently than any normal crack of the bat that he's been hearing, but he, he unfortunately couldn't find the ball, and it ran the White Sox out of a pretty important spot in that top of the third. Where they had a chance to tie it up. 2-2 Two -two on Hernandez. Giolito comes home. Another foul ball. Well, and the White Sox, it looked like it had really been starting to time up Gilbert's delivery. You saw Ben Intendi break for third, perfectly timed. Wonder if they've kind of spotted something there. Maybe that over aggression played against him. Well, it did, but uh, Tim got a good jump, so you knew he was going to be safe at yeah. second. Problem is, uh, Robert Jr. has to fight with two strikes. Good swing and a miss. Foul tipped into the mitt. A strikeout for Giolito. Attention Chicago sports fans. NBC Sports Chicago has a brand new app. One stop shop for latest news, analysis, highlights, and more from all of your favorite teams. Scan the QR code on your screen to download now. Scan that QR code. Gordon's downloading the app right now. That's, that's expeditious, man. Good job. One out in the inning. Kelnick. Swings and lifts one high in the left. Benintendi in the gap just slightly and will make the catch. You I'm can see some of the haze move in through the outfield yeah, right there. You've got some of the fog coming through, I guess. Could be uh, grill smoke too out it, there at Edgar's. It, it could be. I do smell grilled onions just a little bit. Nice burger out there. I'm also downloading an app to uh, learn how to read. That's all right now. <laughs> I feel like if you're downloading an app to help you read, it's got to be an audio only app, and I'm not sure how that helps you read in the first place. Anything anything can help. Well, I'm interested to learn more, maybe during the break. As a former English teacher, I'm, I'm willing to extend lessons to you. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of Shakespeare, a lot of Othello, though, and that's not my fault. Eugenio Suarez in an 01. He popped up in his first trip. Lucas high and tight with a fastball. Trying to get his first one, two, three inning. Mariners have had runners on in both of the first two. The one one is just outside. There's the slider from Lucas. This would be a huge inning for him to, if he can get out in the next couple pitches. It kind of gets him. He's still kind of over what he would like, but he gets him back in the game where he can possibly get through five. 2 1 on the way. Down on a change. 3 and 1. Kind of in a similar spot as he was last time with Suarez. Had him in a 3 1 count. You know he's got pop and the ability to leave the ballpark from foul pole to foul pole. However, 
hitting under 220. This one shot in the left center. It is deep. And it is off the base of the wall. Suarez around first, headed to second. Throws late, and it's extra bases. A two-out double for Eugenio Suarez, 105.3 off the bat. Yeah, Suarez thought this ball was gone. If this ball hops right to Robert, he's got a chance at it. He was just jogging. He thought he was he had himself a, a homer. Let's see him exhale and try and shift it into a better gear. Now that ball just took a slow hop to Robert. Otherwise, you're right, he's got a chance. So now Giolito's got to strand another in scoring position today. First pitch inside on Tom Murphy. Murphy a strikeout in the second. Two to one for all the loud baseballs the Mariners have hit. Lucas has kept him to just two runs. It's early. So more of the same. This pitch a check swing. He went. It's a big swing pitch in this at bat. You see Murphy shake his head, but 1 1 as opposed to 2 0 is a huge, huge difference. Yeah, it's pretty close. I think he went over what you would consider checked it up. It is close, though. Lucas with the benefit of the call. Ground ball to Jake. And the throw over is in time. He gets the catcher. So Lucas works around a two out double. Sox will send Eloy Jimenez to the plate when we come back. And just hammers that one deep left center field 105 almost 106 off the bat a no doubter gets the White Sox within one and they still sit there hopefully they can get back to even Eloy's taking the first it's 1 0 Gilbert kicks swing and a miss that time a slider the fourth inning brought to you by the village of Bedford Park got this note from Chris Kampka during the break. Eloy hit the solo shot in the second. And that's the seventh straight run on a solo home run by the White Sox. It's the longest stretch like that since 2020 it's back in August they had nine in a row on solo home runs. You'll remember they hit four in a row against the Cardinals. And then another five against the Dodgers in the next series. They like hitting solo shots against the Dodgers. They went back to back twice in the same game against the Dodgers. And the other thing is too, you know, you can you can say, ah, oh, listen, oh, solo shots, not enough. You got to hit with runners on base. Well, if they're leadoff homers like Aloy hit today, not a lot you could do. I don't know that there's any rules that you can take advantage of, put a guy on before the first batter. Well, there's never a bad time for a homer. I can promise you that. Swing and a miss by Jimenez. We got Sox math. Yeah, we do. Love Sox math. Take oh, Gordon boy. Beckham's jersey number with the White Sox and add Ichiro's jersey number with the Mariners. Kept nice and simple for you here on a Saturday. Well, I'm involved. It's got to be simple. Whether math or English. First pitch to Gavin Sheets bounced in front. Now that was a cheap shot by me. That's I okay. Apologize. That's all right. I like taking cheap, sh cheap shots against myself, so it might as well just be somebody else. I'll laugh. I get to laugh. We're laughing with you. Yeah. Just know that. Of course. Sheets has got the third baseline open. We saw Ben and ride one down that way. Swing and a miss on a curveball, though, from Gilbert. Here's yesterday's Sox Math winner. A lot of Jason fans here. Jay Lazowski 14. Probably a good follow on Twitter. So follow him. Oh. Sheets in the right. Hard hit ball. And this is off the wall. Sheets around first. Down into second. I heard it. It almost sounded like Sheets had another two iron. Going to backspin over the wall. Yeah, that was more of a, uh, I would say it was more of a four iron. Just kind of a nice little cut. Look at this splitter stays right on it. Great job by Gavin right here. And the nice thing about this is 
This ball hangs up right at the bottom right there. If it kicks off that wall, there is going to be a play at second base. It doesn't, which allows Sheets to be in the second base easy. I'm not saying Sheets is slow, but if that ball comes right off the wall, doesn't matter how fast you are, there is going to be a play at second. So good break there for the Sox. Vaughn rolls over the first. J.P. Crawford and the throw off balance and no scoop by France. So Vaughn's on board. That's a nice break for the White Sox. First and second. Watching that live, I, I, I was wondering why Crawford felt the need to get rid of it so quick. And when he did, I saw that it was going to be low. And I'm like, well, this is going to be interesting because he had Vaughn out by what looked like. I mean, he would have had him out by four or five steps. He takes another couple steps before he throws that ball. He throws it over there easy, no problem. And there's two outs. Now the White Sox got something cooking. The error by the shortstop. Berger has been home run binging. Gilbert in a tough spot, probably the toughest so far of the afternoon. A double and an error as the Sox in business. Funny too, Crawford's got a great defensive reputation. Came up that way as a top prospect with the Phillies. Berger tops one to Suarez at third. He'll go around the horn. Five, four, three, and in time. Another double play hit into by the Sox. That's three today. And the Sox scoring chance is turned away. Two to one. Mariners lead it. I think they might take a look. No, they won't. Two to one, Mariners lead. <laughs> Here's your Sox math winner. The question put to you was Gordon Beckham's jersey number with the White Sox plus Ichiro's jersey number with the Mariners, and of course, 66. Your winner at the Weatherman 15. Of course, it's the Weatherman 15 because any other number would not have gotten that question right. Well, I suppose the Weatherman 51 might have had a chance at it. Possibly. Possibly. There's a chance. Who could say? Two to one Seattle. Sox have had runners on in support of Lucas Giolito, who pours a first pitch over for a strike. But double plays so far. We got a change on the infield as well. Tim Anderson's out of the ball game. We'll set the new defense for you in just a moment. This is pitch number 70 for Lucas. Called strike 0 and 2. It's Elvis Andrews sliding over to short. Trying to figure out how to play shortstop. He's never been there. Yeah, new for him. And Zach Remillard is into the game. First major league action over at second. All Lucas right. Misses high. Yeah, Remillard got called up just a couple of days ago, seven years in the White Sox system. He has played every position except center and catcher down at Triple A Charlotte this year. Swing and a miss on a slider. Time now for a message from Powering Chicago. Neighborhoods lighting up Chicago are helping a neighbor in need. Powering Chicago's commitment to better construction, better careers, and better communities never quits. Powering Chicago, IBEW Local 134, Nika, Chicago. One away, and Giolito will work to the nine hitter, Jose Caballero. Caballero doubled. That was in the second, one for one. Mariners got both their runs in the first inning. Lucas has had a battle around some traffic, but he's done so. Called strike with a fastball, and all of a sudden it looks like he's got that release point figured out again. It's one hit in the third and a strikeout here to start the fourth. Caballero takes his time in an 0-2. 238 average for the Mariners second baseman who has provided a lot of value on base percentage wise. He's got that up near 400. Sebi's got to check the gear here. Loose shoelace it looks like. That's tough to get to. You got to take the shin guard off. You got to flip the thing out of the way. And then after catching 95 mile an hour fastballs all afternoon. You've got to tie your shoelace. And now Caballero is tying his shoelace. It's or, a shoelace party. Good Lord. What is going on? 
Well, this is now in Caballero's defense. This looks to be the ankle protection. Either way, some gamesmanship going on, it seems. Are you, are you sure Lace is fine? You have to tie anything over there? I'm good. Okay, good. Excellent. See if the umpire's got to adjust anything. No, he seems set. After a lengthy shoelace delay, we're underway. The 0 2. After all that, a slider bounced. Now 1 and 2. Guys will do that, though, right? A little gamesmanship. I missed part of that, but it did seem like, I mean, there's no way that Sebi would have waited to tie his shoelace. One, two, You high. know what I mean? Like, it, because the hitter, Caballero, took his time out. Right. That would have been the time to That's do right. it. And I don't think that Sebi would have waited. It, it seemed like he Something did. was going on he there. It took a little bit extra time. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep you posted back in Chicago. That's the game within the game within the game. High fly ball out to center. Fading back is Robert, and he'll make the catch just in front of the warning track, two away. Sox fans were shocked when beat writer James Fegan was swept up in a round of layoffs at the Athletic. Chuck sits down with James to talk about what happened, the outpouring of support, and what's next. It's the White Sox Talk podcast, available now on NBCSportsChicago.com. That's a must listen. James is a fantastic baseball writer, one of my favorites. He will catch on and not be a free agent for long, that's for sure. Glad he and Chuck got a chance to talk a little baseball. J.P. Crawford hit the home run in the first. His fourth long ball of the year. Giolito just misses in with a fastball. So 2 and 0 to the leadoff man Crawford. Lucas came real close to a 1 2 3 inning in the third. Eugenio Suarez knocked a two out double. This could be the first inning he gets it. Called strike that time a heater. I think Quinn Wilcott has had a pretty good day behind the plate. He's not giving much off the plate at all. Anything on the edges he's giving but if it's off that plate he is not moving his strike zone around at least at the start of this game. Sebi set up away pitch misses in missed the target that is but caught the strike zone 2 2 that's what matters most. Now one pitch away from a clean one two three and sending the socks up to bat trailing by one. Down the hill comes Lucas popped up right side Zach Remillard. We'll make the catch his first put out in the bigs. Great to see it. Elvis Andrews will lead off when we come back. Flexibility. Pick games based on your schedule and your budget. Don't miss any of the action this summer. For more information, visit whitesocks.com slash ticket plans or call 312-674-1000. From T-Mobile Park, I'm Connor McKnight alongside Gordon Beckham. Logan Gilbert on for a fifth inning of work. Two to one. Mariners lead the White Sox. A home run by Eloy Jimenez. The lone run for the Sox and Elvis Andrews will hit. He started the game at second base has since moved over to short. Tim Anderson out Zach Remillard on to play in the middle infield. He's at second making his major league debut. Elvis is 0 for 1 against Gilbert. He rocks and fires and catches a strike with a very high slider. Fifth inning brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. They really are. I've got one. The 0 1 kind of a feeble swing that time he did not go. Good pullback one and one. How's it drive you like it. I do beautiful. Very nicely. Driven car. The car of Gordon Beckham. It is. I think a lot of people talk about that. That's right. One one to Elvis. I'm ready for my. Uh, sponsorship. Rolled over Suarez gets him at first. Sebi Zavala will hit. He's 0 for 1. 
Gilbert now at 55 pitches. Both starters, Gordon, have kind of had to battle base runners here. The difference being Gilbert has gotten three double plays in order to erase some of these White Sox base runners, and Lucas has kind of had to do a little bit more work with the strikeout. Yeah, the White Sox have kind of put themselves in good position and then immediately gotten out of it this game. They've they've hit into those double plays and has killed all the momentum that they had. I mean, it seems like multiple times, at least three out of the first four innings, they've had chances to score and haven't been able to do it. Zavala shoots one foul. He's now 0 and 2. And Intendi on deck. He's been on twice, reached with a double and an error. Murphy set up outside. Here's the pitch. And time a slider. Feels like Gilbert has had a hittable fastball this afternoon. He's given up a 310 average on that pitch this year, and that's up almost 40 points from where it was last season. Split just in, tough take. Now 2-2. Two, two. That splitter is what keeps guys off balance, though. Savvy swings and misses. Catch every pitch with the fastest internet from Xfinity. With a reliable connection you can count on in the clutch, even during peak hours, the next generation Xfinity 10G network. With two away, we're back to the top. Andrew Benintendi has got an exceptionally dirty uniform. Well documented. Yep, go so ahead and break that down for us. Yep. Hope you didn't miss that. Got the club, he's upset. A lot of extra work scrubbing that dirt out of the uniform. Splitter misses up and away. One and one on Benny. Doubles power has been there for Andrew. He shot one down the left field line in the third. For his 16th double of the season. The 1 1. That time got a fastball. That pitch is right about the same spot where he hit the homer last night, his first of the year. Be nice to see him do it again. I talked to him before the game and I said, hey, they come in bunches. They generally do. Just a little bit late on that. I think I think something's grabbing him a little bit. I think it's his wrist and he's fighting through something right now because he's he's winced a couple times. And he still rakes. Yep, lifted out to left center in front of Rodriguez. That's a really nice piece by Ben Intendi. He slid into second and was kind of flexing that hand earlier in the ball game. You saw him do it. After the foul ball and the fastball. Yeah, back to a breaking ball. Just really nice. Something's grabbing him a little bit, but he's grinding it out. It's at, excuse me, it's a curveball, and he just lifts it into left center, and we're gonna get the debut of Zach Remillard in a important spot for the White Sox. First big league at bat for Zach Remillard after seven years in the Sox system. Pitch high on a fastball. There you see his numbers in the minors over 694 games. Remillard did not start. He's on in relief. Tim Anderson out. Anderson short. Remillard's playing second. Good eye on a fastball up. Ben Intendi away from first. Here's the pitch. Called strike on a breaking ball. It's a good take on a 2 0. Not a lot you're going to do on that pitch. It's big league presence for Zach. Two one, another take on an inside breaking ball. Remillard went to Coastal Carolina University. The fighting shot to clears. It made some noise in the College World Series over the last decade or so. It's in Conway, South Carolina, just up the road from Myrtle Beach. 3 1 inside, and he'll walk. Nice first at bat by Zach. 
Nothing like your first. You know, you always will remember that that he was in Seattle and facing Logan Gilbert, and he's got a thousand a thousand OPS or. He's, he's batting a thousand. How do you stay patient in your first le big league at bat? I don't know. I love it. It's almost like, hey, he's going to walk me. He's scared. That I, is, kinda, I dig that. That is unbelievable. Great job by Remillard. Sox have two on with two away. Luis Robert will hit. He's 0 for 2. Sox trill only by one. First pitch, swing and a miss at a high fastball. Got what he wanted. Gilbert threw it toward the outer edge and now suddenly his pitch count up at 70. Both starters going to have to manage the gas there. Oh want a curveball down. This is the most walks that Gilbert has allowed in any start this year three. Even more than that. His previous high total two walks He's only done that three times in his 13 previous starts he mentioned it off the top 78 base runners coming into today's game the fewest in Major League Baseball despite an ERA right over four. Robert shoots one through. Benintendi waved around third he will score the throw cut off and we've got a tie game. Great job by Robert. Let's not forget to credit Zach Lemillard for walking and keep the inning alive. Yeah, Benintendi got this going with two outs. Very nice job. Just a single, little bloop single starts this off. Remillard with the walk and then a great job going the other way by Robert. He looked like he was trying to do that, hit that hole. He got a pitch to do it with and does his, his job. Good job by Remillard to make sure he got through as well. That's good base running. He got to third. And uh, good, good all the way around for the White Sox right there in this tie ball game. They've worked their way back into it. Uh, a good job by the White Sox who were down early against these Mariners. We mentioned the double plays just a couple of seconds ago, and it's not like the Sox haven't taken some good swings against Gilbert. Maybe starting to wear him down a bit. Eloy Jimenez homered in the second, his eighth of the year. Absolutely crushed one out to left center. Runners at first and third. Jimenez takes the first pitch into center. Julio Rodriguez lives out there and he'll put it away in the gap. But the Sox get one and tie the ball game at two. Bottom five coming up. the other day from Val Burrell and she says a little trivia she said who is the White Sox scout that drafted both Zach Rimillard and Gordon Beckham name him Kevin Burrell her husband and uh, her husband said you know I'm getting old when one of the people that I drafted was in the broadcast booth and one just got called up so a funny little story uh, that I got from Val Burrell, which I appreciate. And Kevin Burrell was the guy that drafted me out of Georgia and uh, did the same with Zach out of uh, Coastal Carolina. Well, Remillard, and as Giolito moves Rodriguez off the plate with an inside fastball, Remillard walked in his first major league plate appearance back in the fifth to keep a rally alive for the White Sox. Luis Robert Jr. singled. To score the second run of the ball game for the Sox, 2-2. Giolito comes home, and Rodriguez shoots it through between third and short. And a leadoff hit. Let's head to the studio and hear a little bit from Chuck and Ozzie, fellas. Thanks Chuck that's just a taste of what's to come on White Sox post game live presented by Subaru Ty France takes a change up up after the leadoff hit by Julio Rodriguez France is single and flight out to right one for two. Giolito fires a 1 0 pitch gets a strike on a high slider. 
France was an all star last year. The all star game is here in Seattle this year. They've actually on some columns up there in right center field got all star week countdown 20 days. 20 days from now. Giolito's pitch line down the right field line and twisting foul. Attention students take advantage of our student ticket offer student steals. We offer bigger games better seats and lower prices. Sign up for alerts to get exclusive ticket access and for a chance to win a 20 person suite. Sweeps ends tomorrow Sunday June 18th to register text student to 244769 or visit whitesocks.com slash student. One two France high in the air shallow right long run for Rebelard he makes a basket catch showing off some range from second base Zach Remillard. I'm loving this little Willie Mays style first or say you know he already got his first put out so the oh, second one it's time to uh, to do it. Uh, all right hey let's it's time for a Miller Lite moment we're just going to highlight Remillard. I love it. A little pop up over the first baseman. And this is the second baseman's play, so he's doing the right thing. This is his priority. He goes over there and just nonchalant, little Willie Mays basket catch on the line. No, no big deal. Been doing it for years. That's right. Awesome stuff and an MLB debut. Here's Teoscar Hernandez. Runner goes from first, and he can't find the handle. Kinsevi. So in the second on a steal is Julio Rodriguez. The power speed cover for Julio Rodriguez is just unbelievable. Yeah, and Sevy's Sevy's looking for interference here, and Pedro Grifol is out of the White Sox dugout. Let's take a look. See if we can determine anything. That bat follow through was right in front of Sevy's mask. See if it tipped him. Yeah, I think it didn't, but I think it definitely distracted Sevy and he definitely tried to play it up right there and that's OK um, to see if he could get the call. I don't know if they're going to overturn anything. It would be difficult umpires met to talk things over. They are not going to overrule this initial. Stolen base. You know some catchers get taught you know step into that hitter right. if you can but and you got to draw the call you, you still have to throw it I think maybe not but I think that you have to get contact and I didn't see it right there. It it definitely looked like Sevy lost the the handle of the ball and then when he didn't have that good handle he kind of did a little acting and I kind of you know you got to do it sometimes. Oh one called strike on a swing. Oh two. Yeah I think too as much as you can say oh, catchers you got to step into that batter. Well he's swinging a 34 ounce bat coming around at a billion miles an hour. There's a lot to think about. It's not exactly easy. Well it's not easy either because he's trying to get a good throw off. How are you going to get a good throw off if you're hitting the batter. So. Oh two ground ball through the left side. Waved around third is Rodriguez. The throw is going to go to second. And the Mariners take a lead on a Teoscar Hernandez RBI single. It's three to two. Saw this last night when we weren't on the call, but the White Sox multiple times got in the lead and then the next inning gave up the lead. That is not what you really want. You want to shut down inning from your pitcher. Unfortunately, they don't. They do it again here. The Mariners scratch a run after giving up the lead. And that always just swings the momentum right back to the team that ties the ball game or goes up. And um, tough one for the White Sox here in the bottom of the fifth. Right when they tie it back up, they give the lead up. Jared Kelnick, 0 for 2. One away in the inning, 3 2 Seattle, swing and a miss on a good change. Kelnick leads the Mariners in extra base hits. And slugging percentage and OPS. The 0 1. Good block by Zavala. Earlier this year, Kelnick hit a 482 foot homer at Wrigley Field. Is that far? Oh, yeah, a little ways. The longest at Wrigley in the StatCast era. Wow. See Gregory Santos warming up in the Sox bullpen. Got an update on Tim Anderson. 
Kelnick shoots one in the left. Benintendi's got it measured. And back to first goes Teoscar Hernandez. It is right shoulder soreness for Tim Anderson that's forced him out of the ball game. Elvis Andrews has slid over to short. Zach Remillard's at second base. So Tim done for the day after grounding into a double play and a walk. Hopefully he's all right. Been banged up a couple of times this year. Hey, Eugenio Suarez, easy for me to say. Two away and a man on first. Seattle leads three to two. Good first pitch slider. Had him looking at the wrong velocity. Giolito gets ahead 0 and 1. Yeah, Gio doing a good job trying to get through this fifth inning. This will probably be it for him. He's at 96 pitches right now, trying to find a way to get through five, especially with how many pitches he threw early, would actually be a win for the White Sox. Down on a change. Yeah, he's had to fight it a little bit. Seattle's hit for some power, a couple of doubles in this game, a home run, and this inning, the fifth. Probably the weakest contact the Mariners offense has made yet it gets a run. It's well placed. Now a 1 1 pitch popped him up. Said he's going to take a look. But this is going to get into the seats row number two. When that baseball left the bat I thought for sure it was in the seats it kind of curled back just a little bit. I, I thought we might have a play on it. But only gets to the second row. See the pitch count totals for Lucas in each inning. That second is where he had to spend a lot of fuel. He threw a lot of pitches in the second. Like I said, if he can if he can find a way to get through this inning at around 100 pitches, then I think that that's a gutsy performance from him because he didn't have his best stuff today. Up and in 2-2. Two -two. But that's that's what you have to have like you're not always going to have your best stuff and I feel like what you've seen from Lucas throughout the year is he's been solid pretty much even when he didn't have his best stuff he's found a way to give his team a chance to win and he's done that again today assuming he can get out with only giving up three. Two two count here it comes. Fouled off the screen to me Gordon that's the mark of some of the best guys in this game. Sure we see ungodly stuff from some of the top tier starters. But how do you manage a lineup when you have less than your best. I think that separates guys in terms of you know you look at a guy that's a one or a two or a three I think that elevates you from one spot to the next. Another two two just outside and a good stop by Seve. Gio is going to have to work hard here it's going to be a tough decision um, but I think this is probably his last batter either way so. Slider down away. Good job by Seve to get in front of that. Make sure that runner does not get to scoring position. But he will be off with the pitch here. Three two and two outs. A lot of leverage here in this moment. One run game and now pitch clock violation. Wow. A pitch clock violation called on Lucas. And that's ball four to Suarez. He'll go down to first on the auto walk. Pitch clock violations are not reviewable by rule. In fact, you can't even argue them. You'll get tossed. Sox have had Gregory Santos warming up in the pen for a bit. Ethan Katz out to ch chat with his pitcher. Boy, that's tough. I mean, this is, you, I don't, you yeah, just I don't described it. That's the moment. This is the pitch. Maybe my final one of the day. And oh, by the way, you've only got 20 seconds to deliver. Yeah, I didn't. I, we're going to look at look at it because I wasn't looking at the clock. Well, you can just see it here. A one, oh, 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 yeah. indeed. Yeah, I mean, it's not wrong. And this is what, you know, this is the age we're living in. And there's so much good about it. I love the fact that it sped up the game. But in situations like this, I just. It's it, it could change the game right it just changes the game and I, everybody's got to live with it. I obviously had some uh, I didn't love the idea of the pitch clock. I think I've since said as long as it doesn't change a game. I love it because it obviously speeds the game up. It's just times like that where it's an important spot. The guy needs a couple more seconds. It's not like he was taking a minute to throw the baseball. That kind of stuff kind of you know it's a little ticky tack for me but hey everybody's got to play with it.
Good first slider to Tom Murphy after the auto walk to Eugenio Suarez. Puts runners at first and second with two away. A 3-2 ball game. Seattle just took the lead in this fifth inning. An RBI single by Teoscar Hernandez. He's at second. Suarez at first. The pitch by Lucas. Just foul tipped. So now 0-2. I'm with you. I think by and large, the pros of the pitch clock way outweigh the cons. Agree. I just I would hate for big moments to ha be influenced by because the guy didn't throw it for a second but everybody's got to play with it. And you got to draw the line somewhere right. That's right. Slider just missed outside. Good effort by Lucas and a good job to lay off by Murphy. Pitch clock running. You get 20 with runners on. 15 with the bases empty. I almost feel like it's worth a reset even this deep into the season. It's almost second nature by now. The pitch swing and a miss. Giolito gets out of it. He's pumped. He's angry. He only gave up one. The White Sox have a chance to tie when we come back. Forward one in the right. Just got out of here. Backspun the baseball. 106 off the bat. 397 in the right center field. A sinker from Brian Wu. He had some solid stuff last night, but Sheets was up to the challenge. Yeah, you know he hit it good and he backspun it when at the end it tails back towards center field. That means he just absolutely got inside of it and backspun the baseball. I've been saying it's a two iron. I mean, doesn't matter what club it is. It left the yard and it was absolutely crushed. Right. That's where you look at the metrics and Gavin would say I don't care. It counts as a run. Yeah. Happy to have it. Sucks trail by one. Gavin lifts another one. Same spot. This one is off the top of the wall. Sheets into second and will put the brakes on there. Thought that had a chance and instead oh just a second double of the day for Gavin Sheets. Some guys on the bench are saying weight room right now. Big Gavarino takes this ball deep to left center above the zone. Looks like he he got a little bit off the hands and that's why it didn't leave the park. But he thought he had it just one of those days. It's not very warm out here. The ball's not traveling as far. I mean it literally missed a home run by a few inches. But good for him. He's on second base. Chance to tie this game back up here in the top of the sixth. Andrew Vaughn the hitter. Snake away from the catcher Murphy but no chance for Sheets. Sixth inning brought to you by the Illinois Lottery. Four doubles for Gavin. Vaughn has been so good with runners in scoring position. That pitch a slider taken for a strike. Coming into the game, a 386 average with an 1166 OPS in high leverage. Some of the best numbers with runners in scoring position in the American League for Andrew Vaughn. Sheets away from second. Gilbert home. Vaughn pops it up. This is going to get out of play. Good opportunity for the White Sox here in the sixth with a leadoff extra base hit by Sheets. They gave up the lead in the fifth. Pitch high and in. Two and two. All right, we've seen a lot of Gilbert so far. This will be pitch number 80. Now in a 2 2, what's Vaughn looking for to drive? He's trying to drive, but he's also trying to get Gavin over to third base, so kind of get him in. Get him over, get him in if he can. Ground ball down to third, backhanded by Suarez. The throw across the diamond gets Vaughn. The 2023 Scots MLB All-Star ballot is open. Vote daily at WhiteSox.com slash All-Star to decide who represents your Chicago White Sox this summer. Maybe vote for Jake Berger, maybe. Berger, Luis Robert. Service is out. He's going to make the change. That he is. Gilbert Dunn with a man in scoring position and one away in the top of the sixth. Sox have a chance to take the lead, but it'll be against somebody other than Gilbert. I'll tell you about the pitching change when we come back.
is crushed to left field. He is so unbelievably strong. Robert, we're going to need that. Aloy goes the other way. That ball is smashed to left center field. Jake Berger. Ooh. Back to back again. God, the boys, there is a energy right now that I'm feeling from this team. Jake Berger's got a chance for the runner in scoring position. He will face Matt Brash out of the Mariners' bullpen. Time now for Lakeside Bank. Call to the pin for the best lineup in banking. See Lakeside Bank at Halstead and Pershing, where every client has their own banker. Lakeside Bank, it's about time. See the numbers for Brash. He also pitched last night, an inning and a third, three strikeouts, two hits. Brash has some nasty stuff out of this Mariners' bullpen. Yeah, here's his arsenal slider. Four seam fastball. He throws that slider more than the four seamer by a long shot. Look at the four seam fastball numbers nine, almost 98, and still throws more sliders than he does that heater. See if Berger can turn him around. First pitch swinging. There's that slider. Well placed, tough pitch. Berger 0 1, chopping on that gum. It's Gavin Sheets on second base after a leadoff double here in the top of the sixth. Brash set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Another slider a little further outside the strike zone. 0-2. You can tell how difficult a guy's slider is to face when he keeps moving you off the outside edge and you see guys continue to offer. Well, look at the names Jake Berger is surrounded by there in terms of home runs per at bat. Checked his swing on the breaking ball that time. Now one and two. You know, I was talking to Jake today, and we were talking a little bit about this slider sweeper that Brash and the guys and the Mariners throw. I mean, he's literally got to be looking at the slider that starts at his left front hip, the hip that's facing you right now. That's what he's looking for for one to hit. One, two. Did he check it? He did not. Berger went around. That's that pitch aimed at his front hip, but a ton of break from Brash, and that's two away. And what I mean by that is you get you you want the slider that starts at your front hip. You see where that starts right there? It starts in the middle of the plate. It's always going to be off. And so he's looking. I mean, it shows you how good it is because he's telling me exactly what he's trying to look at, and he's still offering it one that starts in the middle of the plate. Got to really zone him up. Here's Elvis Andrews. Brash gets a little extra space at the top of the zone on a 99 mile an hour fastball. It's almost like right now you want to eliminate the outside half of the plate. Look fastball or that slider in. Murphy set up away. The pitch misses outside and low. And it's got some serious sweep to it as well because I'm watching it live and even live you can tell how much break horizontal break it has. Um, it does have some vertical break but it is it, it really has to start off the plate in to even be close to a strike. And that's Inside. the problem. Wow. And that's the problem because you start saying OK I have to look for that slider in and then he rushes you with the fastball and it just it gets on you so quick because you're kind of expecting the slider that you have a hard time getting out of the way. This is where if you're looking too much for that slider you could get hurt if he misses that fastball up and in you're vulnerable in that position the 2 1 Elvis into center long run for Julio but he'll make the play the Sox threaten with a leadoff double but they leave sheets at second three to two Mariners. Hector and Ozzy are back in the booth. Don't miss the exclusive Spanish broadcast of the Sox versus the Rangers Monday at 7 on NBC Sports Chicago Plus. Get Ozzy into that booth. I love it. They're great. Here's Gregory Santos on to work for the White Sox. Yeah, Gregory's 31st game of the year. He's been very solid, 2.67 ERA. Hard throwing righty who has done a wonderful job for the most part when coming in for the White Sox. He'll look to Keep these Mariners right where they're at. One ahead of the White Sox. Here in the top or bottom of the six, excuse me. Yeah, just a note on the Hector and Ozzy broadcast. That booth you saw, the bottom part of your screen, that's the booth that's usually my office. Okay. At guaranteed rate field. Uh, and last year, 
I'd squirreled away a couple of bags of chips, you know, for when times get tough and rain delays happen and things like that. And the fellas ate every single bag of chips. Well, uh, you can't they were leave all chips. empty. I, you know, it was my mistake, but uh, fellas, I apologize. The stash is empty. So when you get to the ballpark on Monday for the Spanish language broadcast, I don't have any snacks for you. I apologize. It's my fault. Ozzy's, it must have been Hector, because I don't see Ozzy snacking too much in the studio when I'm there with him. Santos Hector at 98 gets a strike. I had the good ones, too. I had like Cool Ranch Doritos, you know, Ooh, the good flavors. Crispy. A couple of sea salt and vinegar chips. I don't know if you're into those. But no, I'm not. One of my favorites. You had me at Cool Ranch. Well, who doesn't? I don't know. Maybe I can make a stop at the ballpark, oh, to the ballpark on Monday, bring a couple of bags of chips for the boys. Yeah, drop them off. Santos has been absolutely wonderful this year, a 163 ERA+. Plus. That pitch, a called strike three to get Dylan Moore. That ERA plus number normalizes right about 100, so 63 means it's about 60% better than the average ball player, and there you go. Yeah, he got a little bit of extra on the outside. It's one of the first times I've seen Quinn Wilcott give a little bit extra away from that strike zone on the outside part of the plate. The White Sox will take it, though. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. Kind of underlines how good Santos' stuff is. Here's Caballero with one away. 101 on the sinker. Here's the line on Lucas. Five innings, eight hits, three runs, two earned. Three walks and five strikeouts. He battled and put up a good fight against these Mariners. Didn't have his best, but kept his team in the game. Check swing didn't mean to, and this will go foul down the third baseline. Yeah, I thought Lucas threw well. I mean, he really did. He, he, he didn't have his best stuff today, but he grinded out um, his outing and was able to get through five innings. I think that people probably don't understand the importance of having that five, at least five innings from your starter, because anytime you don't get through five, you really put the, the bullpen at a disadvantage and also your manager who's having to make decisions, not only for today's game, but the next two or the next game and then moving forward. You have to have uh, you don't want to get behind the eight ball with usage of those guys in the pen. So Lucas did a good job. Didn't have his best stuff, but fought it. Just dropped over Vaughn, but foul. We had gives you the option to, or Pedro Grifol rather, the option for Gregory Santos. You know, he's a guy who can work multiple innings. So now with Lucas going five, maybe Santos could go two. Maybe he only needs to go one. If Lucas goes four, now you've got to have a multiple inning outing from Gregory Santos, and that puts pressure on guys. Absolutely. And you also, here's the starters, you know, the lines today. Um, you also have the ability now that Santos didn't have to get down, meaning go into the dugout and come out for the sixth. There's a better possibility he could pitch into the seventh now because of that. And, and people don't understand that, too. Relievers, most people don't, um, but relievers, when they go into the dugout, sometimes that's kind of it for them. And it's harder for those relievers to go into the dugout, come back out, and start another inning. So that, that all goes into the psyche of a pitcher and Pedro knows all these guys, so he understands what he's got to do to get him in the right situation. Lifted to right. Sheets will fade back and play it head high. Two outs for Santos. Your point's well taken, Gordon. You know, we talk all the time about relievers in this game, breathing fire. You know, there's more triple digits than ever. It takes adrenaline to get to that point. Right. And you go sit down with your teammates, and it's just, it's going to happen. That wears off a little bit. Yeah, those relievers aren't used to the starter life where you go in and out of that dugout. Um, they come in. They're generally uh, jacked up to be in. They have a short window and short runway to be in that game, and they that's where they operate. Max Velo takes max effort. That time a slider from Santos. There's a look at the White Sox bullpen that has been really good over the last few weeks. A couple of bumps here and there, but who's not going to have that? Inside sinker at 99, fouled off the other way by Crawford. Having a good ball game, a home run, a walk. He also popped out to second. Santos wants a one, two, three. There it is. Chopper back to Gregory. He'll look it into the mitt and throw over to first. Santos makes quick work of the Mariners, and the Sox will bat trailing by one.
Marquette Bank. Marquette Bank is Chicagoland's trusted neighborhood bank and home lender. Check out Marquette Bank at eMarquetteBank.com. Marquette Bank, love where you bank. There's a group of White Sox fans making up a sellout here at T-Mobile. Justin Topa into work. The 30, yep, the 32-year-old from Binghamton, New York, pitching to a 3.42 ERA so far this year. This is his fourth season in the big leagues. You'll see his arsenal right here. Sinker, slider, cutter, change. Up to 95 with that sinker. Generally that sinker, slider mix, what you're going to be seeing if you're a White Sox hitter. He'll face 9, 1, and 2 for the Sox. Sebi Zavala's 0 for 2. Rolls one up the middle. J.P. Crawford will make the throw. One pitch, one out for the Sox in the seventh. Back to the top with Andrew Benintendi. On base all three times, reached on an error, had a double and a single, came around to score in the fifth. Yeah, he's been all over the base pass. He's liking that leadoff spot, it looks like, and small sample size, but he's enjoying it so far. Well, he doubled down the third base line earlier in the game. Topa throws a slider outside, catches the zone, not sure how. Yeah, that that zone from Quinn Wilcott that I was giving a lot of praise is starting to, to lengthen as this game goes on. 0 1 offer. There you see Benintendi fouled off the other way. The reason I mentioned that double is because Suarez is playing well off the line at third right now. Seventh inning brought to you by IDOT, Roadway Safety. It's not a game. It really isn't. No, it's not, Gordon. We keep it serious up here. The 0 2. Sure do. Inside from Topa. Eight hits for Seattle. Six for the White Sox. Just got a piece of a slider toward the lower third of the strike zone. Looked like Benintendi was trying to turn on that pitch. Yeah, it might have been a little bit of a defensive swing because I but he had so much success going the other way last time. He's probably trying to do the same thing and then all of a sudden he gets a hanger that he could possibly hit for a double down the right field line and has more of a defensive swing on that one. One two way outside so back to even at two and two. It is Zach Remillard on deck. Tim Anderson left this game with right shoulder soreness. He's day to day. Back up the middle. Benintendi on for a third time. Three hits. Pardon gonna... Fourth time. Three hits. Sox fans join us for Miller Lite Baseball and Brew starting at only $19. This offer includes one ticket and two beers to new and expanded seating locations all across the ballpark. Must be 21 and over with a valid ID to purchase tickets. Visit WhiteSox.com slash Brews. Benintendi doing his thing today. Getting these White Sox going. It seems like multiple times he's done a really good job of getting on base and, and creating something out of nothing. Here's Remillard. Squares to bunt. Drops it down the third baseline. That's a good one. How about that for your first big league knock? Not only is it his first big league knock, but it's a heady baseball move. You've got one out, man on first base, and now two men on, one out. He sees that Suarez is back. He's playing the game. Congrats to Zach on his first of hopefully many. Perfectly placed, no chance for Suarez. I mean, are you kidding me? I love it. I, I like it because he's he's playing the game. It's oh, not like, hey, first play. I, yeah, I need to go get a hit for me. It's like, okay, hey, this is a good time to lay one down. He's playing the game. Like the third baseman's back. All right, I'll take my hit. So now two aboard for the Sox, one away. Robert takes his strike, an RBI single in the fifth for Luis, tied the ball game at two. It was the first hit with runners in scoring position for the White Sox since Wednesday. That was back in the fifth. Topa brings home an 0-1, shattered bat. Robert needs a new piece of lumber. You can see the damage. Let's take another look. It looked like that stung the hands too badly for Robert. 
No, just a small sliver. You know, it's interesting because you watch Robert sometimes and you're like, well, why is Robert, why is he on a breaking pitch that's down and away and hitting it deep to left center for a homer? Why is he taking a slider the other way earlier for an RBI? And this is all approach. Sometimes he gets away from that approach, and that's when you see him pull off that slider. See if he stays back the other way. Oh, two, good eye. Look that slider all the way in. Now one and two. You mentioned it's all approach. The good thing about Robert is we have seen him, you know, down in two strike counts. Dial things back in, attack breaking pitches, and hit him for extra base hits, too. Yeah, and these Mariner pitchers throw a lot of breaking stuff. So for him, it's got to be – it's smart for him to just think about going the other way. And if they hang him one, he can he can deposit it in left field, in the left field bleachers. But if they don't, he's still on that better pitch that's down and away, and he can still get some good wood on the bat and hopefully drive somebody in. Decent speed aboard as well with Ben Intendi at second and Remillard after his first big league hit a bunt base hit at first one two just tapped it stays alive. It's a good pitch right there on a sinker and a one two count right at the bottom edge of that strike zone. Good hitters will spoil pitches just to get one more pitch and then hopefully you get a mistake. Talks about it all the time the longer the bat goes the more it tilts in a hitters favor normally. One two. There it is again. A couple of pitchers pitches. Robert stays alive. I mean that ball starts in the middle of the plate. That's why you're like why is he swinging at that. Well it started on the middle of the plate maybe even a tick off the middle in and ends about six or seven inches off that plate. That's the you really got to find a way you got to pick a side of the plate where you're going to basically hunt because the only slider that's going to be a strike is one that starts on Luis's front hip and we've been talking a little bit about this because there's a lot of sweepers from this Mariner staff. It has to start at Robert's front hip to almost be a strike and so that's really his aiming point but you can't just look at your you know for a pitch on your front hip or you're going to pull off everything when you see it. We're well, essentially looking behind you at Correct. that point. Yeah. And if you're looking off speed, you get blown up by a fastball. So you got to stay on the fastball. Zero fun there. Another one, two. Robert fouls another one away. Rocketed into the Mariners' dugout. Wake up. Whew. That one, a cutter. Be interesting to see. He's, he, he just threw that cutter. I wonder if he's going to back that up with the slider that has more break, try to put it in the same spot. That would make a lot of sense based on the placement of that last cutter. Well, Roberts fouled off just about everything Topa's had to offer the sinker, the cutter, the slider. And his pitch misses outside. That's a good take. Robert draws it even at two and two. After Robert Jimenez. Eloy homered that was back in the second. 2 2 pitch ground ball up the middle. Second baseman Caballero steps on the bag and over to first a fourth double play grounded into for the Sox and a scoring chance turned away. Join us for Indiana Jones Day on Sunday June 25th as the White Sox take on the Red Sox at 1 10 p.m. The first 1500 fans to purchase their specially priced ticket package will receive a limited edition Indiana Vaughn bobblehead to purchase your ticket package visit whitesox.com slash Indiana Jones. Gregory Santos for a second inning of work gets a strike against am, Julio Rodriguez. Am I missing something is is Andrew Vaughn a big Indiana Jones. Did he go to Indiana. He didn't. First pitch or rather next pitch lifted into center. Now you got me thinking about the alma mater. Of no he, I think Vaughn. he went to Cal. Cal Berkeley, yeah, right, went to Cal. Cal. Well, I'm just wondering what the. Uh, they had to pick somebody so he looks most like Indiana Jones. That's right probably looks the best with a. Uh, with a fedora. Yes. Love that. I, I'm not uh, is it out yet? I don't think it's out yet the new Indiana Jones movie. I'm. I'm Ready? I'm jonesing to see it. Very much looking forward to nice. it. Nice. Yeah, you're welcome. I mean, who isn't an Indiana Jones enthusiast? Ground ball left side. 
Nice little hop for Jake Berger and the throw. Gets Ty France. Two quick outs for Gregory Santos. Yeah, and we were talking in the break because he had such a great inning in the bottom of the six. He comes out for that top of, or bottom of the seventh because he only threw ten pitches and obviously he's getting through this inning very well too. I mean, I've never. I wouldn't be surprised if he could go into the eighth. I'm not sure he will, even if he gets out of this quickly. But that's the luxury you have of having a good inning. In a short inning on the on the bottom of the six, you're able to come out for this inning. He got right ahead of those hitters, and because he did, he's he's on the attack. And then you see that fastball get taken right down the middle because the hitter is taught keep the inning alive, let the pitcher out there warm up. Yeah, that's perfect stuff from Santos. The challenge fastball, the breaking ball on the corner, really establishing his stuff in the strike zone as Teoscar Hernandez takes his time out in an 0-2 count. Just 16 pitches for Santos, 10 in his first inning of work. Right. I mean, he just went right ahead and attacked. Lifted foul. So Hernandez stays alive. I'm just trying to think. Um, I'm trying to remember. Did those two guys swing at the first two pitches? Or was there one other pitch? Rodriguez took the first yeah, pitch and lifted right. the second into center that's field. That's right. So three pit, two pitches, two outs on three pitches. That's right. That one just off the mitt at 100 from Santos. So one and two on Hernandez. Got a body up and moving in the White Sox bullpen. I think it's Middleton. Santos fires a one two. Doesn't matter. There it is. My goodness. Back to back one two threes for Gregory Santos. Three to two Mariners. Coming schedule for the White Sox. We got one more here in Seattle tomorrow. Three ten Central. One ten our time. White Sox will head back. To Atlanta where I'll hand the ball I mean sorry not Atlanta uh, I'm heading back to Atlanta the White Sox are going to head back to where they play baseball in Chicago I'm going to hand the ball back to Steve they're going to play three at Texas followed by an off day and three with Boston and then Steve will hand the ball back to me when I go back out to the Angels of Anaheim Andres Munoz on for the Mariners he is a good one the dude can carve been on the injured list with a deltoid strain which is a muscle I don't think I have he came back on June 6th bunch of scoreless appearances yet to allow an earned run this season broke onto the scene last year and dazzled he has got great stuff and there's the pitch you're going to see just about 70 percent of the time from Munoz that slider. One oh count Eloy takes that pitch to the backstop two and oh. The Munoz falls behind the very powerful and very threatening Eloy Jimenez. Inside that time the fastball at ninety eight. Three and oh another one of those guys that throws 100 miles per hour basically and throws nothing but sliders. It's got to be unsettling when you're at the plate. Knowing that at any moment triple digits is on the way. Or 97 right there. Then still can, firm. Yeah. Still yeah. Firm. Then he can snap off that slider and people might say well if he throws a lot more sliders why don't you sit on the slider and it's just not that simple because if, if, if you're looking slider you generally won't catch up to that fastball. So a lot of times guys will look fastball and let those hanging sliders make sense to swing at if you can if you're and if you're locked into the plate you can you can make that if you're not feeling good at the plate you, you make a lot worse decisions and swing at balls three two fouled off. What's well, about what you can react to in a given plate appearance, right? Right. And if you're if you're reacting to a fastball while you're sitting slider, a lot of times you're never going to be on time. You're you're never going to catch up to it. So a lot of times we'll look fastball to slider, and you don't want a you know a pitch that slider that's not in the zone anyways. And there's a slider that's not in the zone. Unfortunately, Jimenez went pitching. Sox fans, show your team pride with White Sox checking and an official White Sox debit card only. Available at your local Wintrust Community Bank, Wintrust.com slash socks. Here's Sheets, two doubles and a strikeout. 
Homered and singled yesterday. Seattle's been good to him. Got the average up to 238. First pitch from Munoz to Gavin Sheets fouled off. Sox have had their chances today. They have hit into four double plays. The last one, a 4 3 put out at second with runners at first and second. One away. That was just last half inning in the seventh. The 0 1. I talked to Gavin before the game and I was like, hey, nice. Of course, I used my two iron reference. And he goes, well, I had to do something. Everywhere I was hitting it, they were catching it. And when he said it, I was like, you know what? He's right. He's hit a lot of balls hard that have been caught recently. Today, he's kept it in the yard and still gotten some knocks. 0 oh, 2, and that's what Munoz can do to you. Yeah, he'll tie you in knots. Threw a really good slider down and in right there to Gavin, who was already behind the eight ball, 0 oh, and 2. And, and, and think about the progression. The pitch before this, he threw a backdoor slider that just caught the edge of the plate. So Gavin's like, okay, well, that's a strike. I mean, we're, you know, you're kind of completely behind the eight ball because he's throwing backdoor breaking pitches for strikes. He's able to throw that one down and in for uh, a swing and miss strike. I mean, he, this guy's on his game for sure. White Sox got their work cut out for him. Vaughn takes 100 up, 1 and 0. Nose down with a slider, 2 0. I mean, he's fallen behind, at least he has against two of the three hitters he's faced so far. I would expect Munoz to keep if he throws that fastball to keep it on the inner third against Vaughn because he can hit with authority to the opposite field against velocity. Here's a 2 0. This is where I would turn Vaughn loose. Turn him loose. He, you're probably going to get well that being said this guy throws more sliders than fastballs but you look dead red fastball in the middle of the plate and if you get it you smash it. He's missed with a couple of sliders. Here it is. Outside he walked him. Don't think that was the workaround for Vaughn with two out in a one run game but not many competitive pitches from Munoz to Andrew. It will bring up Jake Berger. You mean Babe Berger. That's right. I do mean Babe Berger. All kinds of home runs. Up there in terms of home runs per plate appearance with anybody else in Major League Baseball. Me and Jason were having a lot of fun trying to find him on the uh, the ballot but he's under DH so go there and. Vote him in. Vote him into that All Star game. It'd be great to see him in the All Star game. Be great to see him in the Home Run Derby, perhaps. Hey, he deserves to be out there. He, uh, excuse me, here. We're here. That's right. Um, he deserves to be in Seattle for the All Star game the way he's played. So does Luis Robert. 0 1 from Munoz. Swing and a miss on a slider. Now 0 2. It's a sellout crowd here at T-Mobile. You can hear him get behind the home team. Jake Berger would love to keep him quiet. 0-2. Takes a slider outside. Jake walked in the second, hit into a double play, and struck out. Been a one-run ball game for most of the afternoon. Eight hits for either side. Here's the pitch. Rolled over and foul. Munoz has got Jake sped up pretty good because that was actually a pitch that you've seen him hit and hit out of the park uh, earlier this year. Um, down in a way that's but it was a strike at the start. It was a strike at the finish and he rolls over it to the left which just shows you kind of how Jake is progressing. He's looking fastball to slider which you kind of have to do. One two another tapper foul but what I'm saying is when you're tapping it like that it just means that he's not backing the ball up far enough to really make really big good contact and it's hard to do but you have to give yourself a little bit more time problem is you think you have a little bit more time and he rushes you with a hundred this is the dilemma that these hitters are in every pitch pretty much of their big league existence a one two another foul ball. There you go rushed him inside at 101 and he was on it which which what the pitcher and the catcher are thinking now is they're thinking OK he's all over that fastball guess what's coming the slider and so Jake he's a good hitter he's probably thinking the same thing he's probably going to get that slider down make sure it's in the zone one two coming 
There you go. Slider down in the zone. Stayed with it to stay alive. And it looked like he's taken some better swings on this, but this is the progression. It's kind of the cat and mouse game that's going on. It's the I know that you know, and you know that I know. So what's next? I think they're going to keep going slider now, but as you just saw, Jake is he's on both pitches. He's just got to find a way to stay, stay on one a little bit longer. A one two again outside. Non competitive offering from Munoz. He's making him work though. And they're going to have a meeting just to change up the the timing of, of Berger. This is all just to get him not looking at pitches for about 15 to 20 seconds longer than he would have which they're hoping will throw him off a little bit. Munoz started this inning pretty quick. A strikeout of Jimenez, a strikeout of Sheets, Andrew Vaughn worked the walk and all of a sudden the pitch count up at 22. Sox have had big moments at the bat here in each of the last four innings. Just haven't had the big hit to make this anything more than a one run ball game yet. The pitch outside. So now from 0 2 to 3 2. And he's lost he's lost that slider a little bit. So it's at, at home plate. You're like I know that's his pitch but he can't throw it for a strike. Am I looking fastball. Not much of a lead over at first for Vaughn. Berger takes his time out. Boy, the strategy on that one too. Jake's usually a guy when he gets to 0-2 takes his time out. He didn't this time. And now gets a chance in a full count to take a breather. Munoz comes home, runner goes, rolled over to short. Crawford on a couple of hops will make the play. So Berger draws out a long at bat against Munoz, but the Sox are turned away. 3-2 game. Day he came in absolutely guns blazing right here. Had a great two innings of work through 19 pitches, 17 for strikes, struck out two people, didn't give up a hit, a walk, anything, a base runner. He absolutely mowed these Mariners down, and he gives way to Keenan Middleton who's been just as good as Santos if not better this year his 26th game of the year he's one to know with a ERA under two very good so far this year he'll look to keep the Mariners where they're at Middleton one of a handful of guys that Pedro Grafal has talked about as pitchers he doesn't mind throwing in any situation it's a great luxury for any manager to have especially as the White Sox offensively just looking to click. They have hit a lot of home runs here over the last week or so. Eloy Jimenez has one today. We're locked in a 3 2 game. First pitch from Middleton to Kelnick is a changeup. 0 1 for Middleton against the right fielder Kelnick. You see, he's 0 for 3 today. Middleton misses high and away with a fastball. I think the big difference and I know you guys have talked about it quite a bit from Middleton is that he has been empowered with confidence to throw any pitch in any location and any count and that's made a big difference for him fastball change and slider. That change tap. Such a big difference as a hitter too when you have to cover three pitches versus two. Uh, you saw Berger in that last at bat. I mean. He, he got out but he had a pretty good at bat going against some really tough stuff which is a slider and a fastball. But when you can mix in three pitches you don't it's harder to have that type of an at bat against a guy that can throw three pitches at any time for strikes. One and two shot foul. Yeah it changes what a hitter the mistake a, a hitter can hit right. Because if it's three pitches, oh, you're looking for that hanging slider, or you're looking for that change up or that fastball up. But well, when it's only two, you can maybe key in on one. Correct. Swing and a miss. Middleton sets him down with a high fastball. Time now for a preview of what's to come on White Sox Post Game Live, presented by Subaru. Here's Chuck and Ozzie.
Thanks, boys. Can't wait. Stay tuned for post game live with Chuck and Ozzie. Keenan Middleton got a strike on Eugenio Suarez, and now one and one after that slider misses high. Sox will send up eight, nine, and one. When they bat in the ninth, then Middleton's job is to keep it right here at three to two. Ground ball up the middle, backhanded attempt by Middleton. It gets through. Andrus throws over, and that's two away. Catch up with everything in Chicago sports with NBC Chicago Sports Sunday. Takeaways from the Bears in minicamp. What Connor Bedard is saying about his potential future with the Blackhawks and more. That's tomorrow after the NBC Chicago News at 10 p.m. It'll be exciting. Connor Bedard regarded as a generational type player. Somebody, somebody in New York had a uh, Connor Bedard Blackhawks jersey already. Saw that. That was hilarious. It doesn't even matter what the number is and whether he changes it. You've got the dart across the shoulders. That's a win. You can get the number changed. Here's Tom Murphy. He's 0 for 3. A couple of punch outs and a ground out. He is all that stands between Keenan Middleton and a 1 2 3 inning. Last night's ball game was a taut affair. Tonight, this afternoon, the same thing. Swing and a miss. Good slider from Keenan. God, I mean, he's not through this inning yet, but can we talk about the last two guys, oh, Santos and Keenan right here? I mean, the, they are absolutely dotting pitches on the edges. They look great. The one two. Just off the plate. Yeah, with Santos, he mixed the fastball and the sinker and that slider and was incredibly effective over two innings. Middleton's throwing everything like he does when he's on. 2 2 kick. Fouled off. That fastball got a little more plate. It's all right. He got away with it, which sets up his breaking stuff. Let's see if he goes after more right here. Excuse me, Murphy with some breaking stuff. Two two. Just got a piece of a change up. I think what might be needed to what might need to be said about Middleton being able to throw any pitch in any spot is that he can challenge hitters with any pitch in any given count. That change ups evidence of it. Slider misses away so now he's three and two. And there's a difference between being able to attack guys with pitches versus trying to get something off the plate a swing and a miss type thing. Yeah he can what you're saying is he can basically throw strikes with it, all of his pitches and get swings and misses. 3-2. Lifted high in the left. Not deep. Benintendi will take a couple of steps in. And that's the third out of the bottom of the eighth. Sox will come to bat looking to tie and maybe take a lead in the ninth. telethon style fundraising event throughout the game you can donate to help support those in need and receive limited edition White Sox gifts including Jason Benetti and Steve Stone reversible bucket hats what more could you want Gordon I could not want anything more than you that. absolutely couldn't to learn more visit whitesocks.com slash charity days the best part is it all goes to a great great cause the White Sox cause right now is to face Paul Seawald he has been really good not perfect but just about 13 of 14 in save opportunities worked a one two three ninth inning against the Sox last night and got a pair of strikeouts. Another two pitch guy out of this white uh, out of this Mariners bullpen pardon fastball slider and it's the sweeper variety for Paul Seawall. He'll face Elvis Andrews Yasmani Grandal on deck to hit for Sebi Zavala. 3-2 ball game here in the ninth. Andrews takes the first pitch out to left, a long run. Now played on a hop by Dylan Moore. So the tying run on board after just one pitch. Elvis Andrews with a big hit here in the ninth. Huge knock to start off the ninth inning. Seawall came in last night and absolutely mowed the White Sox down. So this is good as you see a little bit. He can be gotten, so to speak. That's what we would say on the on the bench um, but anyways 
Andrews on base right here. They're going to pinch it. Yaz get that righty lefty matchup with Benintendi who's been on every time today on deck. Takes a fastball. Owen one on Grandal. You saw his numbers as a pinch hitter. Flash at the bottom of the screen. Big opportunity here for the Sox. They've had runners on all afternoon. The 0 1 is taken for a strike. So now 0 2 quickly on Yaz. Andrews away from first. Seawald comes home. High in a right center. Julio Rodriguez fades into the gap and will make the catch. That's one away. Decent contact against Seawald, but that's one out and a man on. Sends it back to the top for Andrew Benintendi. And as you said, Gordon, three hits. He also reached on an error. He's having a heck of a day. Yeah, and even the error was hit hard in the first inning. See if Andrews wants to try to see if he can get to second base for Benintendi. Inside. Andrew had to kick his legs out of the way. They continue to play him. Seattle does with the third baseman Eugenio Suarez way off the line. See how the infields aligned there. Pretty much straight up in the outfield. 1 0 offer fought off. Now 1 and 1 on Benintendi with Zach Remillard on deck if you're tuning in late. Tim Anderson was removed from the ball game with a sore right shoulder. He is day to day. Remillard came on to play second base made his major league debut this afternoon. 1 1 runner goes Benintendi fouls. Wow Elvis had a good jump. He had a great jump and it looked like they might have a hit and run on and I was thinking to myself. Would they do that in this situation. Obviously Benintendi is a guy that could do it but I was thinking to myself he's had such a good day that like don't mess with anything he's got going on. I, I think that more or less you just saw a pitch that he thought he could handle and just missed it. A one two from Seawald. That's high two and two. So break that down a little bit more with the hit and run. You're saying Benintendi might have to change the swing just a bit. It's just a different mindset. He's okay. having such a good day. It's like almost don't mess with it. But you really want Andrews to be on second base. 2-2 two, two taken out. That's the sweeper. Three and two. You see how he's taking these pitches yeah. like that. That to me is a guy that is in full control of what he's looking at right now. He's not even flinching on that pitch away. Yeah, despite maybe not being close to 100 percent. Ben Attendee's a gamer. 3 2 Andrews goes the pitch is wide first and second for the White Sox after Benny works a walk. He's been on base every single time he's come to the plate this afternoon and that's huge. Even bigger pushes that tying run into scoring position for Remillard. Wouldn't this be awesome. Remillard comes up makes his debut gets his first hit and wouldn't his first RBI be nice. Yeah, that'd be a game tying RBI maybe even more because Benintendi can run over at first. Remillard it goes without saying hasn't faced Seawald. All that plus Remillard made a really great catch on a pop up behind first base had to run a long way to do it from his position at second. Tom Murphy and Seawald just had a meet. To talk about what to do with the rookie Remillard. First pitch, swing and a miss. He let it rip. Yeah, he did. Can hardly blame him. I love it. Have to figure he's coming after you. See Seawald hold the glove to the ear to try and get those pitch comm signs. Remillard in the left. It's through. Around third and coming home is Andrews. The throws cut off and Zach Remillard in his first big league game has tied it at three apiece. Unbelievable. This guy the moment is not too big for him being the first time he stepped on a big league field. Fastball again. He didn't even know where he got it but he, he hit it well enough to get it through that six hole. 
great job. Andrews with a great turn at third base. Makes it easy. The White Sox have come back, tied it up here in the top of the ninth. Rimlard giving the White Sox a huge boost off the bench. Our producer Chris Withers has already cut that tape and it is on the way to the Remillard family. Swing and a miss by Robert. What a huge debut. Roberts had runners on pretty much all afternoon. He's got an RBI single. Could give the Sox the lead if he gets one into the outfield here with one away. The 0-1. Swing and a miss. There's the sweeper from Seawald. 0-2. Twins beat the Tigers earlier today. 2 0 in the final there. Sox need a win to keep pace. Robert takes. That's the sweeper outside. One and two. Great job by the White Sox in this ninth inning to come back. They've had some, some tough games the last few for them to come back, and hopefully they can get a win here, get that good taste back in their mouth. One two pitch, and Robert goes down swinging. Time the express from Seawald and it will bring up Eloy Jimenez. The two out and the go ahead run at second base. Let's take another look. Yeah, Seawald just gasses him up. Might have been looking for that breaking pitch, that sweeper that he threw so many times last night. Either way, unable to get it right there. Leaves it to Eloy to try to put the White Sox up. Gets a strike on a fastball. Sox went one two three against this same guy Paul Seawald last night. And put the barrel on the ball this afternoon outside on a sweeper. Now ten hits for the White Sox and eight for the Mariners. The pitch. Back up the middle off the glove of Seawald. He'll run and an underhand play to first is in time to get Jimenez. But the Sox get one to tie it. Zach Remillard with his first big league RBI ties it up for the Sox. It's in his major league debut and one of them tied the ball game for the White Sox against Paul Seawald, Mariners closer who up until today had only missed one save opportunity. He'd been 13 for 14. Now 13 for 15. Sox tied it up in the ninth. Keenan Middleton back for a second inning of work. Gets a strike on a change up. Mike Ford pinch hitting for Dylan Moore. Ford's been on a tear since getting up to the Mariners. Last 10 or so games. Added to the roster on June 2nd. Slugging 750. Middleton's got him 02. Missed high with a fastball at 96. White Sox bullpen throwing some of that flexibility at the Mariners. Gregory Santos went a couple innings. Two one two threes and Middleton's aiming for the same. One two he checked his swing on an inside fastball slider rather at 87. Ford's got that slugger look about him. Three three tie. Here in the bottom of the ninth, Middleton brings it home and Ford fouls it away. Mariners have not had a base runner since the fifth. And Middleton's changeup. 50 50 pitch, three and two the count. The shift is banned this year. The Sox infield is just about as close to it as you can be. They don't need it. Swing and a miss on a slider. Nice job by Middleton. That's the first out of the ninth.
Yeah, Keenan won this ball away. Almost looked like a little bit of a backup. Got got a little bit lucky or unlucky. I can't really decide because I think that Ford thought that ball was going to come down a little bit and ends up backing up and he swings underneath it. So I think it was probably a positive for Keenan who probably didn't mean for it to do that, but ends up working out for him for the first out here in the bottom of the ninth. Caballero's one for three takes a change for a strike. That's that backup slider. Yeah, it, it's it, it drives hitters nuts because you're expect you know you expecting that ball to come down a little bit. It doesn't. There's times though where it goes right into your barrel. A lot of confidence right here from Keenan. It looks like it looks like he's unafraid to throw anything like you just saw. He threw a lot of breaking stuff to Mike Ford and now he's able to throw that off speed stuff to Caballero here as well. One one miss. Now two and one. This is the spot you don't want to lose the nine hitter. Caballero has been good this year. Not necessarily with the average but he's shown a good eye at the plate on base percentage right around 400 coming in. Takes a strike two and two. And that matters because as much as you talk about kind of that double leadoff sort of guy what matters most is the base runner out from the nine spot it would turn it over to J.P. Crawford who has homered. Ground ball left side Berger on two hops the throw is in time. Berger took his time to get it over there and had to pump up a little bit to get Caballero who is a fast runner and was getting down the line pretty well. We're going to watch it again. This is the swing and miss to Mike Ford for this first pitch of the inning. There's the play at first base. Good throw right there by Berger just gets Caballero by a step. After a quick visit to the mound from Pedro I guess just to make sure he's feeling good. Keenan will continue in on this game. They have a lefty warming up in the bullpen. The White Sox do. So I think there was probably some thought that we want to bring in the lefty to face. Face J.P. Crawford as Bummer looks on. But Keenan Middleton is going pretty well. If he feels good. Pedro's going to let him go. Pitch number 29 for Keenan. It's a strike to J.P. Crawford. He's one for three with a homer and a walk. Julio Rodriguez on deck. 3-3 three, three tie. Here's the pitch. Fouled off on a change. Ooh, that got Quinn Wolcott good. He's down to his knees. Oh. Now everybody out to check on Wolcott. And it's a tough job back there. Gotta watch it all the way in. You're pretty much defenseless. Oh, right underneath his mask got him right on the jaw underneath the jaw I would assume here's probably a better look oh, oh right in the neck um, God it hits his underneath his jaw after it hits his Adam's apple you can see him there I'm good I'm good staying in the game it bounced but it doesn't feel good holy moly you don't see that a lot well, and there's nothing you can do about that. No. Absolutely nothing. You are just exposed underneath that mask. And he gets a nice ovation from the crowd. Yeah, 45,000 behind Quinn Wolcott right now. They won't be if he calls this strike three. Nope, they'll turn on him quick. Yep. It's the way it should be. What have you done for me lately? As long as he's okay, of course. 0 2 on J.P. Crawford. And now he takes his time out. A little extra time for Wolcott to let that pain subside a bit. Middleton fires home and misses just outside with a slider. You mentioned the lefty up in the pen earlier for the White Sox. That's Aaron Bummer. He's ready if needed. One two just got a piece of a changeup. Look at Bummer. Might be he's got the tent if the Sox can he keep it here at three apiece. One, two. And it's high with a fastball. Now 
two and two against the leadoff man J.P. Crawford. Middleton fires and a 2-2, another one fouled away. This is where you get into a little bit of trouble if you're Pedro Grafal, because obviously if you bring in the, the lefty bummer to face J.P., as well as Middleton has been, he's now up to 34 pitches. So if J.P. gets on, then all of a sudden, you don't want to bring in the lefty to face Rodriguez. Middleton's change, did he go? He did not. So this is the, the risk you run. If he doesn't get him, you're kind of, it seems like you're pretty much set on bringing in Bummer against the righty J-Rod or the righty France. And I don't think he went. It's a good hold. A 3-2. Popped him up. This will get to the seats. There have been a handful of long drawn out battles in this game. This one between Middleton and Crawford. Just as tough as any. Jake Berger hung in there for an eight pitch at bat against Andres Munoz earlier. That one went to Munoz. See if Middleton can do it. Crawford sends one foul again. So I think that pretty much based on his pitch count, doesn't matter what happens here. If he doesn't get JP Crawford out, you've got to go to Bummer to face J Rod, which is not the, exactly the matchup you want. Uh, lefty versus a righty stud like that. See what happens here. See if he can get out of it. He walked him. So with two away, a base runner for the Mariners. Yeah. Their first since the fifth inning. And here is Pedro Grafal out to make that pitching change. He has signaled for Bummer. Aaron will face Julio Rodriguez. Yeah, and a couple of great in innings by Middleton right there. He'll give way to Bummer here in the t in the bottom of the ninth. Drama building. Stay tuned. Pitch battle between J.P. Crawford and Keenan Middleton. You see the numbers for Aaron Bummer there. He will face Julio Rodriguez. The rookie sensation last year, American League Rookie of the Year. In his career, brief as it's been, and as good as it's been, he actually hits lefties just a little bit worse, and I mean a little bit worse, than he does right-handers. And the positive is Aaron Bummer over his last seven games, a 1.69 ERA. He's been very good in every appearance that he's been, only giving up one run over that time with a whip of .75. So. He is trending up. Let's see if he can keep these Mariners at bay here in the bottom of the ninth. Everybody deep on the White Sox infield. Crawford's got good speed at first. Bummer's first pitch inside. That's the sinker from Aaron. Got a good breaking ball as well. If he's around the strike zone, he is very difficult to barrel. Right side open as Vaughn holds Crawford. Called strike sinker. Biggest thing when I watch Aaron come out, if he's throwing strikes, A is, is number one. And number two, if he's able to throw that fastball for a strike into righties. If he does that, he all of a sudden becomes very, very difficult to face as a righty. 1-1. A one, one. Called strike on a sweeper. And the reason is, if he can spot in, then that sweeper just, it looks like it's a mile away from where that, that sinker starts out from his hand and it looks like it's never going to get back to the plate but it does on this particular sequence he could back foot him here the pitch swing and a miss on the sweeper bummer works around the two out walk the Sox keep it tied at three we've got the tenth inning coming up to J Rod misses in then throws a fastball for strikes, get back, gets back to even, and then he starts throwing the sweeper back door and then below the zone. And J Rod is out. Bummer with a great stuff. Even, even though he's shaking his head, he he enjoyed that at bat. I'm I'm assuming. Here's Gabe Spire, 31st game so far this year, a two and one record with seven holds. He's been good, 2.28 ERA. Here's his arsenal. He'll use that sinker slider. Combo, sinker, and four-seamer account for the majority 
of his pitches and he'll offset that with the slider a little bit. Over his last seven games, six inning pitch, no earned runs given up with a whip of .33. So he is trending very much up. Let's see if Clint Frazier can get him. Clint is pinch hitting for Gavin Sheets. Pedro's gone to the bench. Romy Gonzalez out to run. He is the zombie runner in for Eloy Jimenez. First pitch by Spire. Swing and a miss by Frazier. Ready to hit. You got to like that. Fastball on the outer third, though. Got by him. 0-1. Sox played extras two nights ago against the Dodgers. They lost 5-4. 0-1 outside. The key here is move the runner, right? If you're going to make an out, make it to the right side. That's get that the, runner to third. Agreed. Yeah. You're going to try to push the ball middle the other way, but. Swing and a miss on a sinker away. He's gotten some pitches to do it with, and he's missed it. So first pitch was that fastball up and out. Had a chance to move the runner or that pitch. Same thing. See if he can find a way to do it here. Got a got a battle at this point. The one two coming fouled it off. Got another pitch kind of toward the outer third. So the record in extras for both ball clubs. Second extra inning game in as many or in three days. Last one on Thursday against the Dodgers which did not end well for the Sox. Hopefully better fortune on this one. Frazier swings and misses at a fastball. Challenge heat from Spire, and that's one away. Just gasses him up with the fastball. They wanted to go up. They got it right down the middle. Clint just not on his game right there, coming in late. Sometimes it's difficult to come off the bench and have a good at bat. He took some good hacks, but was unable to connect. First pitch back up the middle, shattered bat. Well, that's Caballero to throw it over. So good news, it moves the runner. Bad news, it's two away. Go ahead run at third in Romy Gonzalez. It'll bring up Jake Berger. It'll be interesting to see how they handle Berger because Berger really hits lefties very well. Might try to pitch around him a little bit to get to Andrews, but then you've got other things involved with Andrews because he can lay a bunt down, he can do some different things. First offer to Jake. It's high on a sinker. Good take. Either way, the White Sox have got to find a way to scratch one run here. Or they are severely behind the eight ball going into the bottom of the 10th. As the visitors, you really got to score. That one fouled off. A little surprising the locations from Spire to the right handers he's faced. Kind of living on that outside edge with the sinker. Maybe tempting fate a bit. Here's a 1 1. That time inside. 2 and 1. Jake is 0 for 3. He walked. That was in the second. Two one swing and a miss. Spun him a slider and he was over the top. Now two and two. This has been a one run or tie ball game all afternoon. The whole series, even last night. One run for the White Sox, one run for the Mariners, and so forth. Swing and a miss, he got him. Jake goes down swinging. Sox do not score. Bottom 10 coming up. The score. In their half of the 10th inning, with the extra man out there at second base. Aaron Bummer on to work. He struck out Julio Rodriguez to end the Mariners' ninth for the man on. A huge pitch in leverage. It is Julio Rodriguez out to be that runner at second base. You see last year's American League Rookie of the Year trotting out to second. High France will hit. He's one for four, singled and scored. A 
Winning run at second for Seattle. Bummer deals and France taps it foul. 0-1-1. That's the good sinker from Aaron. Yeah, if he can throw those fastballs on the inside part of the plate to a righty, four strikes, he can really put them in a bind because they have to cover that pitch and the backdoor sweeper. 0-1 home. That sinker is down one and one. This is the spot of the order, probably the toughest. Three and four, Ty France and Teoscar Hernandez. Three hits between the two of them. Had some dangerous at bats today. Bummer charged with taking care of at least two of them. Mm -hmm. and that sweeper catches the corner. Nasty pitch from yeah, him. That's the bind he puts right-handed hitters in because they have to look for that sinker in as well as that back door. They have to cover so much ground. Can't do it if he if he is on and throwing strikes. He's tough to hit. One two outside. This is where manager Scott service. It's kind of in an interesting situation. Ty France big time slugger high on base percentage. Sometimes you see guys see teams lay down a bunt in a situation like this because that's the winning run. Instead he's swinging away. You got to have a guy up who can bunt. I was going to say two bunt. That's what I was thinking in my head. Is, yeah. is there's some guys that you go up there and you're like, hey, let's bunt him this time. And there's other guys you never think about it. And they've gotten to, towards the they've tilted towards you never think about it a lot more than the other way. Swing and a miss. Bummer continues the strikeout surge. That's two in a row. He gets France. Below the zone right here, backdoor sweeper that never gets there, but as you can see, France's front hip way out of there because of that fastball in that's rushing him a little bit. They're going to have a meeting. Yeah, Pedro out on the slow walk. Chatting things over with everybody. You see the guy in the far left of your picture. If you're just tuning in, that's Zach Remillard. Making his major league debut. He had the hit in the ninth to tie the ball game for the White Sox. Tim Anderson left this game early with a sore right shoulder. He is day to day for the White Sox. So Elvis Andrews, who is just chatting things over with Bummer, is it short? 3 3 tie. Sox even it up with a run in the ninth. They're going to give the free pass to Teoscar Hernandez, it looks like. Yep, there he goes down to first. Sox want to play for a double play, now with one away. All that matters is that run at second. That's the winning run for Seattle. Going to get a pinch hitter here. This is Cal Raleigh. The other catcher on this Mariners roster, you see his numbers as a pinch hitter this year. Bummer just misses the bottom of the strike zone. Boy, that's a big pitch. That's a huge pitch early in the at bat, too. Cal Raleigh was taking his time to get in the box and had to step in immediately to make sure he didn't get a pitch clock violation. Rolled over, foul. And that's the part with this with the pitch timer that is it threw everybody off right there. He has to step in. Bummer was ready to go, but then all of a sudden Bummer rushes to the plate. Quinn misses that it's a strike at the bottom of the plate. This is all type of stuff with the pitch clock that adds some complexity to just a normal pitch calling sequence. That's well put. The one one runners go. Grandal throws down to third. It's not in time. Berger tried a swipe tag on the lead runner, Rodriguez. He couldn't get him. It's a double steal. We're gonna see if we're gonna see if they're gonna check this. There's one part of me that thinks he might have he slid very funny. And he slid over the bag. So we're gonna have to see where this tag goes on to J-Rod because it looked like he was gonna be safe all the way. But it almost looked like he slid over the bag. It's that little hop. 
I'm going to take a look at it. And you this might as well, player. right? I mean, it's, it's, it, I'm not sure that this is going to be an out, but and you might as well. But I'm telling you right now, if he slides right into the bag, it's not a problem. But Well, the question also becomes, and I couldn't tell from that angle, whether the tag from Berger is on the runner, Rodriguez. Ooh, there you can see Jake there, too. Not feeling super comfortable after that play, reaching for that right knee. There's a moment where his foot is not on the bag and his backside is not on the bag. And that's the moment. Yeah, I just don't know that right it's, there. It seems like it might not be enough to overturn it is my guess. The interesting part about this is Teoscar Hernandez got a terrible jump at first base, almost didn't go. And I think that generally they, before the pitch is thrown, they know if they're going to go to third base or second base. So they, the call was obviously to go to third base. Right. But Remillard was close, and if he's able to be there at second base, they would have had the guy out at second base by a mile. You've got to nail that throw, though. Because if that, anything goes wrong down right. to second. Yeah, and then everybody's like, well, we were supposed to throw it to third. Why didn't you throw it to third? So, I mean, you got to it, I'm just saying that there's there's a weird play all the way around. Well, I got to tell you, and another reason is because it is one two now, but you could technically walk Raleigh if you wanted to get another double play. And that might have been the indecision. It. So a confirmed replay review back in New York. And let's see. The White Sox do exactly what you said they might. I don't think they will down now that he's got him one two. Yeah. I'm just saying you can pitch around him. You can make him make a mistake if you want. Infield in. Swing and a miss. Sweeper gets him. That is one heck of a job by Aaron Bummer to stay in the moment after a lengthy replay review in a one two count and get your guy. Yeah well said. Sweeper down below the zone. Raleigh not even close. Coming off the bench, never an easy task, pinch hitting. Nowhere close to that one. Very nice by Bummer. Now he's got a base to work with if he needs to, but also, okay, and we have another pitch violation wow. on Suarez for taking too long to get in. I, I have seen more pitch clock violations in the last two games that I've called and I've seen all year. Well, and I think it ramps up a bit in extras too. Right, because people are looking to have like a, another second or two. Pitch by Bummer. It's a ground ball to short. Andrews up with it and the throw easily in time to get Suarez. Aaron Bummer works around the jam to keep us tied at three. Sox will bat when we come back. Ninth inning. Just what you wanted. Zach Remillard coming up with a big hit in his MLB debut. Elvis Andrews would score. That tied us up at three. Giving everybody what they were looking for more baseball. Tyler Saucedo on work for the Mariners. 17 games so far this year. This will be his 18th appearance. He has no save opportunities at 3.24 ERA. He's been pretty good out of that pin for the Mariners. He's been real tough on left handed batters. Not as good against righties. We'll see if he can keep the White Sox down. The White Sox have had their chances today all day. They've managed to get back with a sensational and storybook first game by Rimillard. They'll look to take the lead here in the top of the 11th. Andrews will hit. He led off the ninth with a single. And then Babe Rimillard is That's fourth right. up. That's right, he is. So, there's a chance we could have even more of a storybook ending. Jake Berger, the runner at second base. Corners were in for the Mariners, as you just mentioned, in the Mariners' half of the 10th. You know, a bunt is in play here. Andrew swings away, shoots it to first. The throw's going to go down to third. Berger is tagged out. The whale of a play by Ty France. 
He came up throwing. Not a lot of first basemen have the confidence to do it, but he whipped it over to third and got Jake. No, this is just a great job all the way around. I mean, Andrews goes the other way, pushes, pushes the ball the other way. Unfortunately, he hits it hard and right to France, who makes a great play to stop it and then goes to third base. Like you said, not a lot of guys have the confidence to make that throw across the diamond as a first baseman. He did it and really stymies these White Sox. Now it's going to take a double or a couple of hits to score a run versus almost just getting him over and then a sack fly. I mean, that was just a huge swing of momentum right there for France to make that play. Andrews did his job, just hit it too hard right at somebody. First pitch to Yasmani Grandal fouled away. Wow. I mean, that's a huge swing. I mean, it's and it's just it's relatively unlucky for the White Sox. They have one guy in on the grass on that side of the infield, basically. And the second baseman way up the middle. He's got so much room and he hits it right at the first baseman. Andrews away from first. The pitch to Yaz fouled off. Rondal's got the average at 271 coming into the game. Five home runs. You mentioned the ways the Sox could score. Long ball wouldn't go bad. Sox have hit, a lot, hit for a lot of power last week and a half. There's the pitch. Grandal pokes it into right and played there chest high. Let's take another look at that play by Ty France that got Jake Berger, the extra runner. Yeah, if he doesn't make this play, I mean, it's kind of right at him, but if he doesn't make the play, it's probably one run for the White Sox. He's able to catch it and then throws across the diamond. And I can't tell you how many times that that play's not worked on, by the way. That's a it's not like you go out there and you say, hey, we're going to work on throwing the ball to third base as a first baseman. It just doesn't happen. So it was a good play, athletic play by Ty France and really puts the White Sox in a bad position here in the top of the 11th after they didn't score in the top of the 10th. That is Teoscar Hernandez in right. He started the game as the designated hitter. Shot into right. Hernandez will chase it and cut it off into third and held up there is Andrews. So the big day for Andrew Benintendi continues. And though there are two outs, the Sox have the go-ahead run at third for Zach Remillard. Yeah, Benintendi's had a great day leading off for the first time in a while. Liner to right. Teoscar Hernandez does a good job to get this and keep him at one, but they're going to go having it a talk with Salcedo in the mound because Remillard is on fire. He's been up three times in his big league career. He's got a walk and two singles, including his first RBI that is the reason we're here. He had that in the top of the ninth. Pretty amazing. This would be an awesome storybook ending if he's able to do it again. Pete Woodworth, the pitching coach, out to chat. Hey, isn't this guy a rookie? Yeah, but he'll kill you. Yeah. You seen him today? Yeah, he hasn't missed yet. And another thing, Rimlard has already shown that he'll put a bunt down for a base hit. So look at, and, and, and okay, this is going to be crazy. He could put a push a bunt right now towards the second base hole, and it would be a base hit. Ty France at first base just asked for time. He, he's got an issue with his glove, it looks like. He was fiddling with the laces. That should be a pitch clock violation. Well, the, we were ready to go. The exception there is if you do have an equipment issue, you're able to not violate that pitch clock. And I, I saw it only briefly there as France handed the glove back, but it did look like he had one of the laces kind of busted. But the reason I say the, the push bun, you've got a lefty on the mound. A lot of times they fall off towards the third base side. So if Rimlar feels good about this and does this on a regular basis in AAA, he could literally push this ball towards the second base where a straight up second base would be playing and nobody is going to get him out. Nobody. Yeah. Now we got to see where the second baseman is going to end up. But last I saw he's playing him up the middle and they're holding on Benintendi at first base. So there's a huge hole there. If he can just push it by the pitcher Salcedo, it's a it's a run and a base hit. You know what I'm thinking now that France has a new mitt. That busted glove had to have happened on the hot shot by Elvis Andrews. 
So France has been playing the last two hitters with a busted glove at first. First and third for the White Sox. Saucedo comes home. Remillard takes. It's a sinker. Might have been there, but wasn't. 1 0 for Remillard. Nobody calls pitches like that on Remillard. No. 1 0. Oh my. In to right. Down for a hit. Zach Remillard. The White Sox take a 4 3 lead. The rookie in his first big league game is driving the White Sox to a lead. Unbelievable job. This guy is on fire. Just loving his first game. Stays on a pitch the other way. Don't don't talk about a bunt, Gordo. I'm just going to just go ahead and rip one to right. This guy is unbelievable, having a great first start to his big, big league career. I mean, what an absolute day he is having. Nose on the baseball and the Sox lead 4-3 to three in the 11th. That's Scott Service. He'll make a pitching change. Sox continue to threaten. They've got him on the corners with two away and lead 4-3. to three. Don't go anywhere. Top of the 11th. Had two innings pitched against the Marlins on Monday. 22 pitches. You can see he didn't give up a hit, a run, walk, or get a strikeout. Now that was his big league debut. From Oxford, North Carolina, he's a 26-year-old. Slider four-seamer on limited sample size. The White Sox have had a breakthrough day for Zach Remillard. He wasn't even supposed to be in this lineup today. An injury to Tim Anderson, a sore shoulder, put Remillard in at second. He has walked, driven in two, and given the White Sox the lead here in the 11th. Well, it's all, miss it's by all, Robert. It's all about opportunities, and Remillard gets an opportunity, and he, he's taken the ball and run with it. It's been a lot of fun for us to watch up here in the booth. I know his family's here watching him play, and it's uh, always a special moment, your debut, especially when you can do what he's done. A one swing and a miss. They got to be on cloud nine right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if there's a cloud 10, they're there. Sox would love to bring this one home, too. Maybe add a few more. Play with a bigger lead than just this one run. Here's the pitch. Remillard goes from first. Swing and a miss by Robert. So they'll get the one run lead, 4 3, and try to lock it down in the 11th. At the bottom, Johnny Callison, the last guy to do what Zach Remillard has done. And Remillard's done it in probably higher leverage. Callison was 19 when he made his debut. Remillard spent a lot of time in the minors before coming up, making his debut, and giving the White Sox a lead in the 11th today. Jesse Schultens on to work for the Sox. He'll try and close things up. Pitching to a 3.06 ERA. He's been tough on left-handed batters so far this year. Here's his arsenal. Slider, four-seamer, curve. We'll mix in that changeup every once in a while. White Sox did a great, I mean, unbelievable job, especially as that inning started. Looked like they were going to be cut down from any sort of rally, and then it all started to happen with two outs. Benintendi with the knock. And then Remillard with a knock and an RBI to get that much needed run. Schultens will start with Tom Murphy who takes a slider down. Yeah how about that 11th for the White Sox Jake Berger thrown out going from second to third and the Sox put a run on the board anyway. Pitch by Schultens swing and a miss by Murphy. Count goes to one and one. Baseball is a funny thing, right? I mean, you saw that play and you're like, oh, my Lord, like the White Sox aren't going good right now. Of course that happens. And then next thing you know, they've got to run after a few base hits. That's Suarez at second. The pitch. Fouled off. But the difference here, too. It's just being the second game of a three game series is that the White Sox got some great work and in a couple of innings Santos threw two Keenan Middleton threw an inning and two thirds 
Meanwhile, the Mariners have pretty much emptied the bullpen today. So if the Sox can take this one home tomorrow, Schultens delivers. Tomorrow, the White Sox could face a pretty depleted Mariners bullpen. The stars of the of the game today. I mean, Gio did a good job not having his best stuff grinding through five. But the stars of the day are Santos and Middleton. They came in and basically shut any sort of uh, rally or momentum the Mariners had down. And then the White Sox offense was able to do it in the ninth. Schultens gets the first out. Swing and a miss by Murphy. One away here in the 11. Let's take another look. Slider off the, excuse me, cut and fastball with some cut off the plate. Starts right on the edge. Just enough cut to get off the plate. Murphy trying to get that runner over to third. Unable to do it. It's a big out right there. And our friend A.J. Pollock comes to the plate. Former White Sox checks the swing. He went. That's a slider. Good job to get ahead by Schultens. Deep across the White Sox infield and they play Pollock to go oppo in the outfield. The 0 1. Might have checked his swing that time on a slider. He did one and one. Schultens lets that arm dangle as he gets ready. For the 1 1 to Pollock. Here it comes. Ground ball, left side. Andrews backhands, can't pick it up. Berger's got him backed up, but this one just got away from the left side of the Sox infield. The good news is Suarez had to stay stapled to second base. And if you can put that behind you, the Sox are a ground ball away from getting out of it with a double play. Yeah, good pitch by Schultz. He gets what he wants. Roll over ground ball. Andrews unable to catch it. It would have been a pretty close play because Pollock gets down the line pretty good. So it would have been a close play at first, but definitely one that Andrews thinks he should have had. Either way, you've got a runner on first and second now. The double play is in order. Nothing tremendously hurt other than the fact that you didn't get that out at first base and have that two outs in the inning. Yeah, tying run and winning run on board. So yeah, that's not great. It's not great. It's just it could have been worse. If that ball gets underneath him or goes to the outfield and then you've got a man on third base with less than two, that's a totally different thing. Let's see if Schultons can pick up his teammate out there with a rare error from Andrews. We'll say Caballero the hitter. Slider taken 1-1. One, one. Caballero is one for four. He's got a double. Sox have been able to bear down today. Here's the pitch. Schultons misses low. Jesse's going to have to do what Aaron Bummer did, more or less. And that's really get it back together after a pause in play, whether it's that error by Elvis Andrews, or whether it's along the replay delay or missed first pitch. Sox have worked around it from the mound. 2 1. Just outside. Teased him with a slider, but Caballero would not offer. As an infielder, after you make an error like that, you never want to see what you're seeing now, which is 3-1 and a possibility of a walk, because the error now, if he does walk somebody, it looms really large. Andrews, a 15-year vet. He knows how to put it behind him. Popped up. This is on the infield. Infield fly signaled for. Remillard makes the catch. That's two away, and the Sox are one out from splitting this series. They lost last night. They hold a 4-3 lead. Tying run at second. Winning run at first. J.P. Crawford has homered and walked twice. He took the first pitch he saw from Lucas Giolito deep to right. Schultons ready and comes home. Good stop by Grandall back there. He did not start this game. Sebi Zavala did. 
Grandal came in to hit. He's been catching the last three innings. One zero -oh is inside on a slider from Schultens. He has fallen behind here in the 11th, but still been able to get out. Trying to pitch around the extra runner and an error. Two zero, -oh, big pitch coming. Shot to second. Who else to end the ball game? But Zach Remillard, of course, Sox win it four to three. An easy one hopper to Zach. He has the RBI to tie it, the RBI to go ahead, and the White Sox win this one four to three. What a day for the rookie. Yeah, unbelievable job by Zach. I'm hoping we get to talk to him here in a minute, but a great job by the bullpen to keep the White Sox in it. The White Sox are able to find a way to scratch a run there in the ninth, and then Remillard does it again in the 11th. And a great game and a much needed win for this White Sox team. A good, solid victory. Chuck and Ozzie have a lot to talk about, so we'll send it right back to the studio after the Sox win 4-3 in 11. Go ahead, fellas. All right, we get him. Good. Sweet.